right, hey everybody, it's me, Burrito. Welcome back. This is uh, the third part, I guess, in this 1 to 90 series where I'm leveling a character from level 1 to level 90. We've done Tansari Point. We did a lot of the starting of the Tatooine Legacy quest. We also shared some tips on how to get started once you land, things to might want to do to orient yourself, whether you skip the tutorial or did the tutorial. But in terms of the questing, we did some stuff in and around Isley, went to everyone's favorite base, the White Thranata base. We went to Espa, did a lot of work for Wado collecting droid parts, but now we have to get the last droid part for the Rebel Alliance, which is the droid's head, which unfortunately has been procured by Jabba the Hutt. So we're going to be needing to do the Jabba's theme park in order to talk to Jabba the Hutt so we can continue this quest. But first, I want to uh, go over a few things really fast. Something I did off stream, which was I leveled my character to 90 as an entertainer, which allowed me to image design them a little bit. So you'll see that there. Let's see, can I... I don't remember how this is. But anyways, you can see that change their hair a little bit. I actually changed it back to the first hairstyle we got during Character Creator that I couldn't repick. I actually like it. It works well. The ponytail clipped into the backpack, I noticed, and that was, like, bothering me just a little bit. The other thing is, you notice, we got some sick-looking goggles now. Uh, Would have had them earlier, but you have to be an entertainer in order to spend the Bespin currency to get these goggles from the Bespin vendor. It won't talk to you. <laughs> it won't open up the vendor window unless you're an entertainer. So, um, I went and did that. I had some entertainer gas off on the side. But before we get going, let's, um, go over a tip. Because you've all noticed by now that, um, I have three buffs as an officer. I have Pistol Drill Master, Focus Fire, and Tactics. And anytime I log out of the game, log back in, if I change my factional status from leave to combatant, combatant to leave, combatant to SF, which we're not going special forces at level 25, as spicy as that would be. Um, I have to activate each one at a time, and that's a lot of clicking I don't want to do. So let's talk about macros really fast. So if I open up my command window, you'll see this tab for macro. And what macros are is they're custom commands you can create that will run a simple script using commands available in the game that you can normally enter in your chat box. So, for example, um, this one uh, is called ISD. This one is just, all it does is start a conversation with whatever I'm targeting and it uses conversation option zero, which is the first one in the list. Uh, I use this command on the Imperial Star Destroyer, specifically the Black uh, Guard Hangar Bay when I'm flying to the Imperial Star Destroyer Heroic. That way I don't have to actually pull up, bring up the comm window and click things. I just hit this macro, go through it. Uh, another good like example of how you could use a macro is for combat. So this is my macro. That is the parrot macro, which what it does is when I press this, it'll make my medic start healing and firing off some abilities automatically. And what you could do is have this macro start other macros. So you can basically nest commands to fire off multiple at once. So for this one, I did three commands in here. One of them has a delay. That's what the pause is. Pauses are in seconds. So it starts these two macros immediately, waits five seconds, then starts this other one. But if I go down to the heal now macro, which can be hard to find, there it is. You can see that it has these commands called UI action toolbar slot, which the capitalization is important. Zero, 00 and this is basically my toolbar so ui action toolbar zero slot zero zero fires the ability that's in the first row of the first column so in this account in this case zero zero would fire sure shot zero one would throw a grenade and then there's pauses two in between each one etc you could also do macros for a few other things. So one example is this one. This one I was using to advertise for my city for a little while where I have my character standing around and they would say they would shout this message and then they'd wait three minutes and then you can have the macro repeat. So I'm firing macro city at again, which is this macro. They'll say this, wait three minutes and say it again. So you could have these macros looping. Uh, so if there's something that you want to automate. So for example, Jedi's. A very common macro you can find online just by doing SWG Saber Block macro. It is a macro that it will automatically fire Saber Block for you. So you can just always have block up because generally you just want to have block up all the time. Um, 
some commandos use a macro to constantly fire their AOE dot abilities. So whatever they're targeted on will just automatically reapply dots. Um, you want to be careful with macros that automatically fire abilities and assist you in that way. Because if you're saying in a group setting where you're waiting for someone to get back, the group to show up and you accidentally target something and then your macro is still running, you can start the fight early, which can um, cause the group to wipe or everyone die in the worst case scenario. You have to reset. It takes a lot of time. So be careful when doing that in those scenarios. But right now what I want to do is I want to make a macro that when I activate it it's going to apply all of my buffs for me and i don't have to do that so let's click new macro and i'm gonna call this one offy offy buff capitalization is important for the macro names by the way so if you capitalize o you want to capitalize it with the macro command so what i want to do is i want the macro to fire these three abilities that are on the second row of and the last three columns so we know that the count starts at zero. So the last one's going to be 23. So I want it to fire 23, 22, and 21. So luckily I have some over here that I can use. I'm going to paste this in. I just have to modify these. It doesn't really matter which order. Now, one thing that you want to do when firing abilities from your toolbar is you do want to put in a pause of at least about half a second. If you do any faster than half a second, you're going to run into problems firing the ability reliability because of the latency between your game client and the game server. So this is gonna, this macro when I use it, it's gonna fire these three slots and it's gonna wait half a second in between two of these. We don't need the macro to loop. I'm not constantly reapplying these. The last thing we do wanna do is we wanna select an icon for it from this list doesn't really matter what icon it is. It's just for whatever you want to be able to remember it easily. Um, let's just do... I want to do an icon that I haven't used before for a macro. So let's just grab... doesn't really matter. Um, <laughs> let's do this one. I can't even really tell what that is. Offy buff. Okay. So now once we hit OK, it saves and enters our list somewhere in here. I think it usually comes in at the bottom or the top sometimes. Sometimes it'll slot itself away alphabetically correctly. There it is, offy buff. So if I take this and put it on my bar and I fire the ability, you can see now it quickly fired all of my group buffs and now they're all applied. But let's say that I don't want to have this on my bar. I just want to have a button that does it. If we go over here and open the options and go over to key map under the custom tab, you'll find all of your macros. So if I go down to offy buff and I rebind it to a key I'm not using, I don't think I'm using the letter T right now for anything, am I? Momentary. Oh, wait, I am. Let's rebind it then to U. Nope, using that. Man, what am I not using? Oh, I know. Even better, uh, Shift-T. Cool. Now it's bound to Shift-T. So when I do Shift and T together, it will fire the macro. I don't even have to have it on my bar. It saves a lot of time. Sub Zero. Yeah, that is a lot of macros. Um, a lot of these I probably don't even use anymore. Some of them I still do. Some of them very specific. Also, Sup, Ludlow. Why are you so sad? Shit, it's a happy day. It's Sunday. But, um, yeah, I use a lot of macros for a lot of things. Uh, just automation like that's a really nice one. Um, a lot of these also for AFK combat. Some of them I don't really do anything with. So, like, these ones called garbage. I was just doing this to get screenshots or video record, uh, video recording of my characters interacting in a way. Hand sampling is a good use of macros. Um, if you're going to AFK, you need to use macros for group invites. You could also use them to put messages in spatial chat. I usually have AFKs for different um, professions because I have a different toolbar loadout. That's not necessary, though. Uh, this is a really good macro to have. It's very simple for PvP. You just do an assist and then the person's name. So you'll just assist off them every time you hit that button. Um, I have a macro for dump. If you ever want to end a repeating macro, you have to enter the command forward slash dump into chat. But instead, I just made a macro that all it does is dump, and I just bound it to shift D. So anytime I hit shift D, it just dumps whatever macros I have running. Um, 
you know, macros to recharge my droid. I had a macro for leveling the entertainer earlier. I also have some macros that don't even have any abilities. They're just icons to put on my bar for like weapon switching. To remember, all right, the thing under this one is acid or whatever. So there's a lot of different ways you can use macros. Uh, this is a really good one for space. You can macro droid commands. I don't know all. There's a list probably somewhere out there. I had to keep guessing the ratio until I got it. So, but those are for, uh, those are. Um, that's the basics of macros. There's a lot of advanced ways to use them. There's a lot of guides online and macro suggestions. Um, if you're ever wondering if something can or can't be macroed, the general rule is, is if it's a chat command, you can put in a macro. So, for example, you can't macro auto attacking something, which is just, you know, clicking on something and shooting or hitting with your weapon. You can only macro things that could go on your bar or be entered in the chat box. If you use a third party um, software to macro things like mouse clicks, that is something that can get moderated by uh, the SWG Legend staff. So I want to recommend using third party macros. Um, but anything you can do with a macro in game is fine just again remember if you're using um automated macros or looping macros to afk an area you need to follow the afk rules listen to the swg legends forms it's very easy to follow very straightforward and it again you have to run those macros anywhere you can or um there are some areas around the game that are called macro dump zones and every couple of minutes those dump whatever macros you have running it's to prevent people from afk and quest related areas or certain areas like death watch bunkers so people can't just hoard liquid spawns etc it's quite interesting lightful company you saw your friends get eaten in front of me it's they were very crunchy yeah it, that's the kind of assessment that griffin and i came to playing it was that it's very fun to watch your friends die and that's like the main point of the game lethal company the game we were playing cat cat out of context is bad. Well, it's also out of context as bad as I was on the Legends forums. And there was a thread title that was uh, called, that was called Question About Consent. <laughs> and that was the full thread title, which for context, there is a command in the game called forward slash consent, which allows other players not in your group to take certain actions on you that they normally would need to be in a group to do. So, for example, if you're a medic and someone gives you consent, you can revive them or drag their corpse, etc. If you're a smuggler, uh, you can camouflage ally on them outside of groups. So. You saw them die, you're like, nope, I'm out. Yeah, it's a fun game. It's got a lot of Unity jank, though, that um, kind of gets abused and leveraged too much. But say love you. All right, so we got our entertainer buff already. Ready? I got it before we start. We got our medic buffs. So we got to go to Jabba's Palace, which is in the southwest corner of the planet. If you open up your map and do points of interest, you can see the little yellow marker for it as well. Uh, the closest uh, shuttle port in anywhere you are is Wayfar. You can also go to player cities if you want, but we're just going to be going to Wayfar for most of our transit. I'm being a cheapo. I don't feel like paying for a shuttle ticket. So I'm just flying out here. You have no friends, but Lethal Company look cool. Yeah, so Griffin Striker played it for about an hour and a half solo, and he really didn't enjoy it too much. Uh, we played it together for a couple of hours with the two of us, and we had a bit more fun. But the game swings from nothing to do because of how the enemies spawn to too much. Like, you need to calm this down. And with two players, it feels lacking. Like, I really feel you need a minimum of three people, at most four. If anyone wants to get together and play Lethal Company, feel free to join the Discord and hit me up. That's also where I post uh, looking for group stuff for SWG when I'm doing, like, heroics um, or other stuff in Star Wars Galaxies, like, trying to coordinate people for things. Um... But, let's see here. Oh, yeah. Random thing also. So, yesterday we used the field supply call, and I got some stims I could use. This one I did. Now it gave me level 18 and 22 stims instead of level 30 stuff, which I wasn't able to use at the time. Apparently, the level 22 buff is 75 constitution, which honestly isn't that bad. I also changed up the it buff today. We're still getting the XP bonus, but we I just asked for strength and crit instead. Because I don't even have enough abilities to get through my action pool. So, meh. Okay, I was able to activate the weapon. Can I activate this still? No. This? I can activate that. That overrode the weapon spray. Okay. I'm trying to figure out where all the, like, buff categories are. What about this? Similar buff. Okay. The elders, let's take out our bowl. Cool. 
All right, so here's Jabba's palace, everybody, or the Bomark palace, Bomar Monk palace. There's a smuggler pilot out here. If you talk to him, he'll give you some information. But like, I need to get in the palace. There's only one way in it without getting shot up by assassins or getting thrown in the Starlight Pet. What way is that? Come in front of the huts. So he just gives you some context information. And he's basically going to tell you what you need to do in the theme park, which is help out characters, um, different pieces, people of Jabba. So, for example, he's telling us to go talk to Rilo, which Rilo Baruch is the first character we need to talk to to start the theme park. And then we'll go through the chain of command. Alternatively, if you join the Smugglers Alliance and do flying missions, you can actually gain access to Jabba's throne room as well. I think you still need to do the theme park, potentially do finish the legacy quest, but... Right here, you also have the Lance of the Runaway if we want to use it. Let's talk to Bruce, though. I think he gives us a quest that's not related to the theme park, but a side quest. Job has me doing the most urgent missions and needs your help. I need your name whispered in the palace, so me think this here follow would be perfect for this kind of job. Mie, well, how can I help? Well, we have a trader who gave up important stuff to the Dem Corsac. Corsac being Corellia Security, or probably, yeah. And uh, they're basically cops about Jabba. This stuff is, as to me speak, being transported on a Corvette. We must notice your ship to blow up before Reese's gestation. So what's the plan? That'd be the tricky part. Here be these destruct sequences out there somewhere. They could be at any of these three locations. Me information is not too sick. We need you to find it. I'm, I'm, I'll try to find it. Oh, wait. He doesn't give me a mission. I actually have to, like... Maulers... Road court. Oh, wow, that's everywhere. Ah, I'm not going to worry about it. You could do leave the company, but you're too scared to stay in the ship and support get kind of guy. I feel it's the opposite. I feel like going in scarier than going, uh, than staying in the ship, but that's just me. Because, like, it, unless like, it's nighttime, you usually won't get messed around in the ship. Look, you might have some fight and yeah, I want to work for Java. Let's hear about the job first. Smart. You want to know what you're up against before you tackle it? I like that. Okay, here's the deal. You ever heard of Alcara bandits? No, who are they? Well, a long time ago, there was a bandit named Alcara. I allied himself with the sand people and took out the pol a police garrison. Problem is, he immediately turned on the sand people that helped him and slaughtered them all. Sounds like a nice guy. Yeah, he's one of the reasons there's still a feud between the sand people and normal folk. Anyway, Alcara died, but recently a group of people who were ousted from their homes by sand people got together and reformed themselves into a group called Alcara's Bandits, which would be fine if they just stick to fighting the sand people. I take it they're more in trouble than that. Way more. They have to keep supplied so they hit some of the outlying farms and merchants and such. Trouble is those people play Jabba for protection. Jabba, in his infinite capacity for selfless behavior, is now actually going to honor those contracts. You're going to make sure that Alcarans stop attacking the merchants by killing them. You got it. Now go out there and make us proud. Don't come back until you've killed at least ten of them. Cool. This game doesn't really have an ending. The legacy quest, there is an end to it, but it's an MMO. Once you get to the end of the quest, you just kind of do the normal grinds or content and whatnot. You got Eden while you're the support guy. Yeah, just, you know, if it's not nighttime, don't worry about it. I don't remember this miniature job of the Hut replica being here. I am not moving. It's a game, man. Okay, I collected now. I don't know what this is even for. I know I said I was going to, like, not collect things, but... Hidden Jabba miniatures? Is this new? I don't remember this being a thing. Uh, It's not a space collectible decorations oh so the mini job of the hut replica was a veteran reward but it was moved behind a collection as a reward uh in the empire i think in the june update um so i guess this is how you get it now specific to legends you won't see that with other stuff let's talk to olobo oh he's just a junk dealer okay i thought there was somebody else here i can get a mission from is it eight long nope whatever all right, let's go kill some more Karns. You get jump scared. You have an instantaneous Alt Four reflex. Just remove the Alt Four key from your keyboard. Just or right, remove F Four from your keyboard so you can't hit it. Easy. 
You might like Phasmophobia, then, if you haven't played it. Griffin Striker and I play Phasmophobia pretty frequently, and um, if you're in the truck, you literally can't get hit by the ghost. <laughs> it's the perfect, like, I want to play a spooky game, but not be scared. Roll. It is also a janky Unity game, so right, if you like how Lethal Company feels, you like that janky Unity charm, you'll get plenty of it there. Phasmophobia's been around for a bit longer. I think it's a little bit more polished. I think my main issues with the Lethal Company right now is the uh, random generation can be a bit much or not enough. I think it could use a little bit of tuning. Good work. Jabba wants you to take care of some of the Valerian soldiers who are skulking around the palace. Sure. Val Valerian, Lady Valerian, of course, being a competitor for Jabba, you can find her in the Lucky Despot in the Moss Isley City. The Lucky Despot being the downed ship. Legends did add the Valerian theme park, which is scaled for level 90 characters, and it rewards you with a schematic for a new type of Tatooine house. So if you want a house kind of looking like um, Lars's homestead from the film, uh, you get the schematic from there, and it's got to find a structures trade or craft it for you. Um, it's also a prerequisite to get the parts for the um, uh, Star Viper ship. So if you want to get the Star Viper ship, which is a neat looking ship, yeah, you'll want to do the Valerian's theme park as well. So when uh, slaying Valerian soldiers here, you want to stay outside first because the NPCs inside are not named so are not soldiers. They're a different NPC, I believe. We'll go double check that to make sure I'm not lying. But yeah, some of the Valerian's peoples are buying up gambling debts, take the vouchers from them inside so we can cash them in ourselves. Yeah, so inside are Valerian bookies. So this is quest is a really good example of you need when it says kill soldiers, kill soldiers. Don't just kill anything with Valerian in it. And this one killed bookies. This one we have to kill seven bookies, which there's a very limited number of them. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. How many do we have in here? Seven. So this mission's done. Uh, unless I miscount, which I did. Nah, that's seven. I think I skipped five. So that'd be eight, nine, ten. So there's only ten NPCs in here. So if you're competing with spawns with somebody else, you're going to have to wait for a group to spawn. Or if you mistakenly come in here, slay these, not get progress on the first part, go outside, slay the rest, you're going to have to wait for these guys to restock. Which their spawn timers aren't long, but they're long enough to where you probably don't want to wait here. Like the ones outside I, I slew aren't even back yet. I think their spawn timer might be closer to two minutes. So, avoid killing uh, ones that you don't need to slay. Great to see you streaming again. Back to, uh, with a quick question. That tiny shuttle that item that you use for travel, the one I have is very large. You're going to make it the area that I am too close to town to use it. How far away do you need to be? In order to clear, uh, call it an instant travel vehicle, you do need to be outside the radius of a town. This varies. So really great example of that is if you go to um, um, uh, Corvella on Coronet, it's in the northwest corner, you have to drive like 2,000 to 2,500 meters out of the city to actually be able to call the vessel. However, if you land at Nim Starport, go north over the hill, you have to walk like 100 meters in order to call it. So it varies from NPC city to NPC city. It's um, not too dependent on your size, though. The only time the size comes into play is if there is a structure nearby that would prevent the ship from landing. So a player structure or a creature layer also counts as a structure that would stop it from landing. I'm not sure how hilly terrain affects shuttles in terms of size. Usually it just seems to be like it needs to be flat enough. I've been able to land larger ITVs like the G9 Rigger and uh, the X-Wing on really hilly terrain in certain spots. I don't know if the small one that I have is more agile, but if you want the smaller one, if you think it'll help you, you can always do that collection I showed off um, the other day on Friday or the previous part. So we finished working for Real Over Brook. He said, excellent. We'll start collecting on those these immediately. Now, if you're still hungry for some more work, I suggest you talk to my friend Reese. He'll have something for you to do. Realist says you're all right. Some things have gone missing, and I'd like you to go retrieve them. 
<laughs> this sounds beneath me. I can retrieve anything. Get the gem encrusted bell and I'll call you. Gem encrusted bell? I've never really paid attention to the item that I'm getting during this quest. Gem encrusted bell, what the hell? I guess it's like an antique. Worth money. The nice thing about travel vehicles is at least if you are in a player city, you can call them wherever um, a structure isn't blocking you. Some structures have larger footprints than others. So for example, the Mustafarian bunker is deceptively large. If you have the Mustafarian bunker yourself and try and place it, basically that entire place radius that you see on the structure building UI, that's the entire radio area where you can't be in for calling an ITV. A whole ass bunker, a whole ass bunker. Yes, full of ass. Uh, the ass part of that bunker is the elevator, which um, on live I'd constantly get stuck in. <laughs> you need to see it. I do have a bunker back at my house, so maybe we'll do an intermission later if anyone hasn't seen the Mustafarian bunker. All right, so we're at the cave. We got to go find the bell from the sand splitters, I guess. I think I remember where it is. Oh, never mind. We just got to kill these guys so they drop it. Job's missing a ledger containing valuable information. It was stolen by the sand splitters, and he demands it return. Find the thug that has it. It shouldn't take long. All right, we need to do more murder, I guess. That, or I know where a clickable item is in here. Might be over here. Yeah, here's the missing ledger behind this brute. Wait for a second. Click it. It's actually like one of those uh, notebooks, but red. I wish you can get this. It's a good color. A ledger belonging to Jabba the Hutt that contains important information about some of his criminal ventures. Ooh, spicy. All right, we need to destroy more brutes, specifically sand splitter brutes. The one towards the front of the cave where Braves, I believe. So we got to stay down here. Okay, so this is, uh, let's see. Uh, we came, Reese came with a communicator saying that Jabba had a prototype warhead in the garage. It's missing those sand splitters once again. Sand splitters once again. I had no idea they stole so much when they left, but they've got now gotten Jabba's attention. He wants to end them once for all. So we have to work for a specific named NPCs and the warheads. So we need Kurga of the sand splitters, Saul of the sand splitters, and and the prototype warhead. We could again use the targeting trick to target Arib, and you can see they're back there at the back of the cave. What about target Saul? Not Saul Goodman. Back of the cave. Let's see, can I even do the warhead? No. The warhead's also back here. Surprise. So we're just going to mow through these guys. Now I have games that are fun with duos. Uh, we have a good amount of fun with Phasmophobia as a duo. Solo Phasmophobia is better than Solo Lethal Company. But... Um, I still think both games are much more fun with friends. Phasmophobia with four people is a lot of fun. Uh, I mentioned seeing Lolo play Risk of Rain 2 earlier. Griffin Striker and I have played a lot of Risk of Rain 2. I think we've only played with one other person once, but having three or four per people for Risk of Rain 2 could be fun if you're coordinating your builds a little bit. You could get some cool balanced groups, or you could just all no brain and just do Lamau loaders or something. I don't know. Um, Risk of Rain 2 is not a game. Uh, uh, when, I wouldn't mind getting back into Risk of Rain 2 at some point. Uh, this reminds me that we should uh, update our Snowspeeder location to right outside Java's Palace so I don't have to drive back for every single one. Luckily, the ones we've done so far aren't too far away, but uh, Java's crew will start setting us out pretty far. I see another player. A lot of the games I've looked forward to this year, though, have been single-player games. Nothing wrong with that, but... So there's more multiplayer spice. All right, so I'm going to call up my snow speeder here that we've talked about last time. And I'm going to reprogram it. I want to keep the dark lighter cave. Well, I'll overwrite my second one, which is to my house. Uh, Jabu's Palace. Unfortunately, I can't call this on his doorstep. So about here is probably as close or just at least good enough. So now when we're out in the middle of the desert, which we will be, we can zip right back to Jabu's Palace. Um, honestly, though, it doesn't save that much time, considering Wayfar is very close, so even just ITVing back to Wayfar is fine. Uh, looks like the Flashpoint is going on in Wayfar right now, which is not great. Sup, sex mode. 
It was a gold Kappa. For a second, I thought it was a C3PO. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's really appropriate. All right, reuse him back. He says, you did it excellent. The bell, the book, and the, well, I feel like I should say candle, but I'm not sure why. I don't know what that reference is, if anyone gets it. Uh, maybe that would be a good name for the warhead, the candle. Hmm. Anyway, you did good work. Ifant Mon wants to speak with you about these Senex pirates. Here, take your reward and go upstairs and see him. We also got a stolen ring. And we leveled up to 26. So that means another expertise point to spend, which I've already capped out lethal aim damage and sure shot efficiency. Again, though, we can move lower now, though. So let's grab Inspiration, which is a buff that will refill our action. Not going to be a super help right now, but later, probably. Uh, where I want to stick this? I guess here. I think it's got a pretty long cooldown, doesn't it? I don't remember. Maybe here? Yeah, that's fine. Got it from Height Train in a different chat, only for 24 hours, though. Oh, RIP. Uh, we also got Tactics Mark Three, but we already have Mark Four from our expertise, so get rid of that. All right, let's see if uh, my craft weapon's a little bit better than uh, the classic sword. Classic sword. Let's see my cra yeah, craft weapon's definitely better. So let's unequip the classic sword. Let's biolink this level 26 weapon. Equip it. Very good. All right, is this actually a mission or decorative? Accept this mission, yes. Officer Mission 2, your second officer mission. Wow, such rich lore. Except. All right, I have to go to Naboo, and I guess this mission is for my current level, which makes sense. Sergeant M. Nia. We'll do that later. We're going to stick with the Java stuff. Yeah, okay, complete that to get a reward. Okay. Stolen Ring does 4 con. It's probably better than one of the rings that I had equipped. I had 3 strength and 3 strength. Um, honestly, I'd rather have the strength right now. We're, we're definitely not dying anytime soon. When you're playing, you're going to be finding these items. There, uh, you will find ranged and melee versions of the weapon augmentations and ranged and melee versions of weapon enhancements. Just delete them all. Um, if the ranged weapon augmentation or if the if an augmentation doesn't have a health value of like, I'd say at least 220 or higher, you're never going to sell it. Just get rid of them. For enhancements, anything lower than I'd say 22 at the bare minimum, just get rid of. They're used in weapon crafting. All right, I guess he doesn't want to buy my stolen ring, so I'm just going to throw it out. Rather go to Naboo's, am I right? In the boobs? Yeah, dude. I'm all about no boobs and no butts. Are enzymes worth keeping? Isomeraz enzymes are worth keeping at a value of 89.33% quality or higher. Anything lower than that, just get rid of it. You won't see this uh, level of enzymes until you're killing level 80 creatures and up. So basically just junk everything. If you're foraging lyase enzymes, 11 points. It would say 11 points to... It's a good, it says like a random attribute point to 11 stats or something in the description. And the title also say 11 attributes. Those are the only liaise enzymes worth keeping. Don't don't bother keeping anything else. Here's Effent Mod. Um, can you guess where his name came from? Uh, you got it. It's the little hair on his head. <clears throat> I heard you had no trouble taking care of those sand splitters for Rees. That's right. What about it? Just mentioning it is all. Have you ever heard of the Senex? They're a bad lot, worse than the Huts, and I say that they, all, with all due respect, they're slave traders, and slave trading's been outlawed on Tatooine. Got it? Is there some history with Jabba and slave trading? Jabba's a little more clever than most people realize, which is one of the reasons he stayed in business for so long. Not long ago, Jabba ran the slave trade on Tatooine before it was outlawed. Right. He kind of deal with another Hut, Gardula. Gardula got all slave trading, Jabba, and all, all other illegal activities, and Jabba knew the outlaw of slave trading was coming. Shortly thereafter, Gardula was arrested and disappeared. Jabba's been running things ever since. Interesting story. Not really. 
But now you know it anyway. You want some work or not? Whatever you got. Senex are causing some trouble, bringing heat to the planet, and Jabba doesn't like it. Start thinning the Senex herd, will you? There's a little lore for everybody. I don't know. I don't know if that's canon anymore, but I think Gardula is still appears in the Clone Wars or something. The name sounds familiar. Me on jetpack, where'd you go? There you are. All right, I think we're gonna ITV to Espa, everybody. This is a drive I don't want to do. <laughs> Thor's the Republican, an entertaining story for MMO, at least. Yeah, I did all of the character stories in Star Wars The Republic, and I did all of the expansions at least once. The story driven ones, I didn't do the most recent one because I heard it was kind of stinky. So I did up through the Eternal Throne. My favorite story is, I mean, the Imperial Agent story, everyone says is the best, and it's for good reason. It is the best. Um, I like chapter one of the Smuggler story a lot, but the rest of it doesn't really have to do with smuggling at all, especially the last act, so whatever. Um, the DLC is also asked to play if you're not a Force user because it's heavily invested in the Force. And I was role-playing a Smuggler that had nothing to do with the Force. So it felt very totally dissonant from the character I was trying to play. <laughs> If anyone was like, hey, I want to play Star Wars The Republic, what should I do? I'm like, I would say play a Jedi Knight and um, probably do the light side options. You could do dark side. It's more interesting than some other options, but just do the Jedi Knight story. It's a standard like Luke Skywalker, chosen one shit, and make sense of the DLC. Or be a um, Sith. What was it? Either Sith Marauder or Juggernaut. The The empire version of jedi knight and um play a light side sith warrior or marauder that's a really interesting plot line dark side gets a little meh whatever like honestly one of my least favorite plots from um imperial side is playing a dark side sith inquisitor because all of the dark side options is this electrocuting people which checks out but you're just comically evil. Like, there's multiple conversations where you're just electrocuting people because you think it's funny. Or, or you can. Like, you're just comically evil. It's not very relatable or interesting. <laughs> if I was to replay that plot line, I would definitely try Light Side and see if it's less uh, stupidly evil. Going back to Swotor, though, is not high on my list at the moment. If that game played better with friends, maybe I'd do it. But as in, like, Griffin, Striker, and I um, try to go back and do all the quests with two of us. But a lot of the missions were just like, hey, eat ass. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, you have to split up for instances, especially once you get in the DLC. You have to split up for instances all the time instead of going into it. Um, so there was really no point in playing together. So that was kind of a bummer. Let me take my bowl out to get a little buff here. All right, so we're here in the Sedex Pirate hideout, and we're slaying these guys. Let's see. Uh, I don't really remember if it matters which way I go. So I'm just going to go this way. Friends is the best part. You want to have a guy, your friend, freaking electrocuted him right in front of me. Yeah, right. I wish... It's, it's kind of weird saying this, but I wish MMOs put a bigger emphasis on the multiplayer part of them. Like, uh, Griffin Striker and I were questing through Final Fantasy XIV together. And I'm in the Stormblood DLC still, for those familiar. But I haven't really been that keen on playing. Because playing with friends is better than the Old Republic. We don't have to split up as often. Because a lot of the plot-related stuff are dungeons anyways. But we still have to split up pretty frequently. It's kind of annoying. Alright, Ifont Mon says, You're showing a lot of spirit out there. Now it's time to move on to heavy lifting. Find the Senex Slave Masters. Plenty of them around. I want five of them destroyed. Understand? Okay, the Slave Masters are towards the back bottom of the bunker, which for those of you who remember the White Thranted base, this base is almost an identical layout. So they're all the way in the back this way. I don't remember if there's any in this room. No. We gotta go all the way back here and down some ramps. You can't you go on a rant about it, but it's not what players want in an MMO. I know, players want, like, big role-playing games where they occasionally can play with other people or just sit around and socialize with people. Like, when Destiny came out, Bungie's game, 
I um, thought that, you know, the live game, the live service game format, not really MMO, I'm like, this is kind of like stupid. But now that I see the current trend of the market, I'm like, honestly, that was pretty smart. People just want the option to sit around in a lobby with people and mess around and opt into multiplayer when they feel like it. Not always be in a multiplayer setting, which is unfortunate because I prefer sandbox MMOs like Star Wars Galaxies, which I've played. I've played it for years. Um, the theme park MMOs like Star Wars: The Republic just don't last as long for me. It's part of the reason why I like streaming because I like chatting people and hanging out, but I actually want to go out and play the game. I don't want to just stand around in a city. That's why I don't have an entertainer ever. <laughs> I'm like, I got shit to do. Ifot Mon says Senex guards carry key chips. Uh, they use the act to access the data banks, collect the key chips until you have enough to break the data bank. Should take about an item. I think we can kill any Senex pirates. Like, it's not clicking the terminals yet, right? Let me read the journal. Kill Senex guards. Okay, we have to specifically kill Senex guards. Oh yeah, it says it right there, Cynex guards. Which guards are further up this way? We were killing some on the way down. Right? Alright, here's one. Players with one solo, it's sad to see what MMOs have become. Yeah, uh, when I people say MMOs, uh, I ask, is it a massively multiplayer online game? Is that multiplayer capital or lowercase m? <laughs> Meaning that, like, am I actually going to be playing multiplayer or are just people around to hang out if I want? Because, for me, you could find a lot better, like, role-playing experiences just with a traditional RPG and not have the online mechanics, sh like, shoehorned in. Not saying all MMOs shoehorn in their online mechanics. Obviously, like, 14, The Old Republic, Galaxies, um, they all have quality online features. But there are some games that games, like, uh, live service games that the multiplayer feels really tacked on. <laughs> Table RPGs are very uh, commitment, though. Yeah, for tabletops, yeah, I agree. I'm speaking more like in terms of RPGs, it's like games like Mass Effect and stuff. Even though there hasn't been a good Mass Effect in a long time, they're making one. We'll see. If I'm on, says you've received your map station. Now you need those key chips. Find the central computer in the Cenex hideout and wipe all their information. That ought to slow them down. Central computer in the Cenex. Oh, yeah. Start rereading the same line. All right, so the computers, if you all saw it earlier down here towards the back let's just see if we can ignore some of these guards we're almost 10 levels above them so uh they might not want to fight us all right mon says you did good work i'll say that bring it on home head back to the palace and let me give you a little something for your time maybe i'll even introduce you around Okay, so what a flashpoint is, is it's a PvP zone that pops up on the map, and players can go PvP there. What's annoying about it is, is if you want to enter the zone, I think you have to flag up if you're factionally aligned. And um, when you run in, it will force you to flag up. And obviously, as a level 26, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and so there's some quest NPCs in there, so hopefully I keep getting sent out to like bases and stuff, and I won't have to flag for and I won't have to like dive in there. I kind of wish Wayfar wasn't a flashpoint. Moss Taiki's fine, because you don't need to go out there that frequently, but Wayfar, it's a legacy quest city. Because I believe it encompasses the Cantina, and the Cantina oh, is, um, I think it, there's an NPC right outside of it you need to talk to. How do I not get burned out editing videos? Um, State of mind. Uh, let me talk to Ifont Mon. I'll get into that more in a second. It says, it's done. I've got a good feeling. I had a feeling about you. These old bones never lie. I promised you a reward, and now here it is. Enjoy it. If you got some time, you might go see uh, Porcellus in the kitchen. I hear he's having a hard time. And if you could use a good meal, there's a uh, no better place in Tatooine to get one. Yeah, so let me start this uh, mission for Porcellus first. And I'll get into my video editing mindset. He's going to have us driving around everywhere, so that'd be a good time to wrap on some things. Wow, another miniature hut replica hiding in the kitchen. Don't mix it in with the melon potatoes. Okay, 
Here he is. Say, you look handy. I could use someone to scrounge together some ingredients for me. Can you help me out? Just tell me what you need. Fantastic. They're going to be, start by bringing me some, bringing me gizzards. Gizzards from lizards. Lizard gizzards. Dune lizards, to be exact. Dune lizard gizzards. Oh, they already made the joke. Hey, um, hey, that's fun. <laughs> hey, that's fun to say. Okay, start with that, and I'll let you know what else we'll need after that. Cool. Except. Okay. So... Uh, ask me how to not get burned out editing videos is actually a really good question as that's burnout's always something you have to be aware of when you're doing anything. Um, and it was something that I struggled with for a long time on things, which is why some of you with, um, keen eyes or just who pay attention to the details, like video release schedules, you'll notice on my YouTube, I like released a video, released another one, like two months later. And then another one not too long after that. And then I didn't release a video for like nine months. Um, it, I don't have ADD or ADHD or any prescribed illness like that, but I've, I have a hard time focusing and committing on long-term projects. Uh, it's much easier for me to commit to a lot of short-term stuff and see a lot, like have, it's easier for me to have a lot of balls in the air at once rather than having just one big thing that I have to hammer on for a long period of time. Um, I'm not incapable of completing those projects as if I, I had courses in college and high school that would take like literally like three, four, sometimes years to do. I had a portfolio project in um, high school that I, it was a year long thing. And in college, uh, for my bachelor's, I had to do a portfolio over my four years of education. So I can do long-term projects like that. It's just harder for me uh, because I never really quite uh, developed the state of mind for it. And what I mean by that is a lot of the times I approach things with, I need to do this rather than I want to do this or I get to do this. And I'll get in that in a second. Let me read what Porkella said. Porkella says, now time for the soup. Jabba likes a good beetle broth. He calls it stew, but actually it's broth. All right, you say that as face nerd. Um, we need beetle carcasses. For flavor, I'd say about 15. Rock or cave beetles, either one. But anyway, so when I talk about it's hard for me to get in the state of mind for completing projects, it's, um, it's not just projects, it's other things as well. It's... Um, Something that I noticed uh, a way that I thought or spoke with actually Star Wars The Republic. For a while, I was doing progression rating. Um, I was never like top one guild, but my guild was like top one on their server or for their faction. Or I think like once we were overall top three or something. I don't know. It's nothing to flex about. Um, and there was a time period near the end of my first subscription period, which I originally subscribed for like about a year and a half, where... Um, I was logging into play with people, and it was always, I need to log on and do this. I need to log on and play this game. I need to log in and coordinate this raid. I need to do this X and Y. And I always felt shitty about it. And eventually one day I was like, you know what? I don't need to do this. And I just stopped. I just burned out playing the game because it felt more like a chore than rather something that I enjoyed. And rather than directing my energy towards things that would bring me joy and that I would like... I focused more on just what I felt that I was obligated to do. And it's the same thing with projects. So for a while with editing videos, like, I need to write that script. I need to finish this thing. I need to, um, uh, you know, I need to go re-record this or need to edit audio. And, you know, editing audio is not my favorite thing, but it's this thing that needs to happen, right? Um, I much prefer recording video and, um the editing process itself but you know i always go i need to do this 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 but since these are projects that i do for fun i don't i don't make anything off youtube obviously i'm too small um it's a hobby right so i've shifted my point of view to being rather than i need this thing to i get to do this or i want to do this and that's made it a lot easier for me to get more consistent in videos so some of you may have noticed that i've uploaded more regularly since June, or even if you want to be more strict about it, uh, August, because I had I had August, October, et cetera, et cetera. And um, when I've come to editing these videos, writing the scripts, it's not like like with the Beastmaster video I recently released. 
it wasn't that I need to get this video out. People have asked me for it, or I need to go record this thing. It's like, I want to go record this thing. I get to go do this thing. And changing my state of mind has helped prevent burnout. Uh, it's I've had a similar experience with Star Wars Galaxies for a while. I was I need to log in and run survey droids to find resources and report them. And at the end of the day, this is a game that I do for fun. So if it starts feeling like a job, why play it? And I burnt out. I didn't log into Legends for about six to nine months for a while. And um, now that I've shifted that point of view, when it comes to doing things in Legends it's or Galaxies, it's a lot easier for me to stay engaged. So, for example, I was forging lice a lot to do incubation for pets, and I got to the point where I'm like, forging is kind of obnoxious. I don't want to do it. And I just stopped. <laughs> like, once, I, once it shifts from I get to go forge to I need to go forge, I'm like, nope, that's it. I'm done. And then I just move on. So, like, if I'm working on a video project that I'm not really excited about, like... Uh, one project that I have in mind is discussing how attack roles work in this game and how defenses roles work, but I need to learn more, um, I need to basically learn After Effects, because I need it to be more visually oriented, because it's a little bit more of a um, dense topic. Just having, you know, sitting text on the screen and, like, nice B-roll shots of Star Wars probably won't be enough for some people. Because we're going to be, we're going to be a flow chart. We'll, we, we'll be in a flow charts. Um... I, I haven't quite got to, I get to learn After Effects. I'm still like, I need to learn After Effects. So I'm hoping that by just getting in the swing and getting more familiar with the editing software by doing videos like uh, the 1 in 90 series like I have been doing, or even guides where I don't really need the After Effects stuff, but it might be like, fun to throw in once I get better at it, then it gets better. Like, for example, <laughs> for these video editing, they're obviously long videos, and I was just like, isn't there a way for me to speed up the timeline so I can like, skim faster? I actually... Like, I never thought about that, but now I know what the hotkeys are for speeding up or slowing down playback. So when I'm editing this video, these videos, I'm actually watching back in double or quadruple time so I can get around faster. <laughs> Just stuff like that, like basic editing stuff that, like, I could find if I sit and watch a guide. But, man, watching guides on, like, software has always been brain rot for me. I have a hard time paying attention to that shit. Also, thank you, Sex Mug, for noticing my video cadence. Flex. Streaming literally feels like a job, though, at least for me. Um, for me, it's a... Like I said, I... So, my work had me shift to uh, work from home during the start of the pandemic, and I'm naturally a more extroverted person. So, being out of the office was kind of hard for me, mentally. And um, while I still had my friends, we were... You know, that's when we shift, shifted to doing stuff um, online for like tabletop and stuff because we were being careful because of the pandemic and whatever at the time. And I was having a really hard time at home not being able to socialize with the people as much. And while I still had some online friends like Griffin Striker to play with that I appeared on his stream for a while as he's been streaming more consistently or for longer than I have with more consistency. I wanted to be able to chat with more people and with other things. Like Griffin, he likes galaxies. What's not his favorite game in his world? I don't you know, blame him. Um, it's probably not my favorite game in the world, but I do love it a lot. It's definitely my favorite MMO. But there's just people that I want to be able to talk with galaxies or experience games. Like, I first started streaming Hyrule Warriors, and so I wanted to talk to you about Dynasty Warriors games and the Warriors series and whatever, or and then Zelda, and then I got on to doing some random hack and slashes, and then this, and then, um, um... Uh, Toontown, which, you know, Sex Mug reintroduced me to. So, and now I'm kind of cooled down on. Maybe I'll hop back at it when there's some updates. <laughs> but yeah, so, long answer to a short question. It's, uh, it's a personal change that I've been going through in life. I've been having to do a lot of change and self-reflection over the last few years. Also, shout out to the Crate Skeleton. Give me the, give me the Give me the POI discovery. Fucking, where is it? Do I have to click this? No, that's later. Give me it. And I will come back here later, but... Where is it? Oh, it's over here. Stupid POI discovery. Badge collector, crate skeleton, whoa! Yeah, sometimes they're a little bit picky on where you have to stand. All right. Um, I haven't been really anything Pork Pork Celis has been saying. I'll read it all here in a second. <laughs> Sorry for those who are, uh, want his deep comedy.
Your friends say you game hop too much. There's nothing wrong with game hopping. If your friends say you game hop too much, maybe you make friends that game hop more often. <laughs> Griffin Striker and I have our like favorites. Like he'll go back to Final Fantasy XIV pretty frequently, me Star Wars Galaxies. But we like playing other games. Like part of the reason why I jumped on Lethal Company, I was like, hey, a new game to try. And I really want to try a new game. All right, let me read uh, what Porcellus has been saying over their comms because I haven't read it since the Beatles. Okay, so in regards to the squill, Jabba's picky about salads. He will eat squill liver salad though, so I need you to bring me mountain squill livers, not desert squills. Too reverie, mountain squill only, which we kill them in a desert, not a mountain, but whatever. Dragonette flank steaks are the main course. Their meat is so succulent. Yes, flanks, dragonette flanks, sixteen of them if you don't mind. For dessert, zucca fruit pastries. No common zucca meat. Get a wild boar. Uh, I'd say you could go buy some, but Jabba won't eat something we paid for killing them yourself. That's very weird of you, Jabba, whatever. The last thing we need is wine. The best wine comes from, well, it doesn't matter. Jabba won't drink the best wine. He has a taste for his Karelian Merlot. Get it from Valerian Thugs. I like how instead of going buying wine, he's like, go murder some thugs for it. Very cool of you, Jabba. How much extra damage does this weapon proc do? Try to see how I get this extra weapon attack to proc. Yeah. Bum attacks Valerian Smuller with a poison weapon hits for 452 damage, 452 acid. Hey, actually, that's not bad for um, a low level weapon spray. Those weapon sprays are pretty good, guys. If you got those, use those. Four extra 452 damage on a health pool of uh, 2400 ain't shit. Or ain't bad, I should say. It occupies the buff slot that your binoculars, your infrared electro binoculars occupy, but uh, as we know, that buff doesn't give you much. It's just a nice reusable one, so. To be honest, I, I kind of wish I had more games outside of Galaxies that I consistently played, or Game Top 2. Like, I still haven't finished Baldur's Gate, but I will eventually. Um, I've been playing Phasma with Griffin. Uh, Gundam Evolution shut down, unfortunately, here. Just couldn't get the player base. Because game you ever seen needs too many people to play it, like, six minimums ECO. Oh, okay. I was like, is that an acronym? No, it really means, like, Echo. I've seen that game, never played it though. I've never watched people play it. Like I've I know that it I know I knew of its existence. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, oh, you guys wanna go get the escape pod POI? It's right over here. Can I not call you jetpack right now? Eat my ass. I gave you the feeling you hadn't felt in years when you first played it, but yeah, lack of updates. Ah, uh, that's kind of why I dropped off. There we go. Found the little escape pod used by C3PO and R2D2. Cool. Can I call my ITV here though? How much is a jetpack? Um, if you buy a deeded jetpack, so a jetpack that's already been crafted, I think. Um, right now it's like sixty mil, so sixty million credits. A jetpack base, I think, runs around 45 to 50 mil. So if you can, like, get a friend to help you assemble it, it goes a little bit. It's a good, You can, like, save a little bit of money. Sometimes I've seen people sell jetpacks from their data pads. So crafted jetpacks, but jetpacks that are locked to their data pad. So you have to go meet them in game and trade for less. I think the cheapest I've seen someone sell, like, a whole jetpack was 40 or 45 mil. <laughs> the jetpack... Listen, the jetpack is optimal for a 1 to 90 run because I could fly over low walls and rocks and down trees. Okay, I could drive in a straight line more frequently. It's meta. <laughs> the reason jetpacks got more expensive is because if you open your data pad on Legends and right click the jetpack, you can equip it as appearance. So you can do the Boba Fett and have the jetpack on your appearance slot. You can also do the same with the HK 47 jetpack. Those are the only two jetpacks in the game, though. Uh, how do I get it on a... Oh, right. It's in my inventory now. There we go. 
Uh, I played this game for a while. I've saved up some money. <laughs> That's why, like, when I'm getting this character buffed by an entertainer, I have to I, I have to tip a lot. The entertainer I know is money. Like, or the inter entertainer knows I have money. Like, the Republic Commando backpacks, like, 15 to 20 mil. They know I have money. <laughs> I can't hide it. Ah, uh, yes, these ingredients will do perfectly. Oh, I can't thank you enough. Jabba will have to let me go after this meal. This is going to be the best meal I ever cooked. Can you think of anything for me to do now? You should head down to the garage and see Barada. I brought him some snacks a little while ago, and he was complaining about needing help with something. Let's go help Barada. Here's how to get 90 acid jellies. First, get 90 60 mil. <laughs> uh, the jetpack's optional. I stress that. If you really want something that goes over low walls, get a pet mount that flies, like the um, Reptilian Flyer, the Pico Pico, the Whisper Bird, like I have. Pet mounts are cheap. They're slower than vehicles, though, so you don't really need them to fly if you want to really fly over walls. Uh, wrong way. Vehicle, I guess, I guess it's this way. All right, Separata. Priscilla says you're good. You tell me I, yeah, I need help? I do. Someone with a steady hand and steady nerves. Is that you? Yeah, that's me. You're good. Let's get started then. Valerian's racers are cheating. There's no way they're building better vehicles than mine. Find out what they're doing. What do you need me to do? Find some of Valerian's pod racers and see what they have. Got it. So you can actually get outside from here. Oh, hey, another Jabba Hut replica. There's a second door to outside that leads to like the side or back of uh, Jabba's palace. Uh, I don't even know if everyone knows about this. It's in a weird spot. Um, I th so we came from this hallway, but I think if we go up these stairs and maybe down this way, oh, maybe up this way? No. Oh, you know what? Might need throne room access to do it. Never, never mind. If I remember where it is later, I'll show it. <laughs> yeah. Right now, though, uh, we'll have to take the slow way. Okay, we gotta, yeah, we gotta go back to... That's not the base that I... Oh, right, we gotta go back to that one. I'll set Anchorhead. All right, we'll go ITV there. Or not for my first video. I didn't know you could auto-aim on auto-attack or use the gun, a game pen in space. Yeah, there's a lot of common things like that where... Um, um, you think would be common knowledge, but isn't. And this is part be the reason is because this game has gone through so many iterations. <laughs> Keeping everything straight is kind of a pain. Like, a lot of people get turned off by the uh, manual aim of the game. I'm like, you know, you don't have to, right? And it's actually kind of bad to manually aim. <laughs> and they're like, wait, what? There are two scenarios where you'll use manual aim. Scenario number one is if you're doing Death Watch Bunker or the Geonosian Cave, and you come across a row of crates or a row of rocks, more common in the Geonosian Cave, where you need to uh, destroy them to get past. You have to use manual aim. Auto aim won't let you destroy those objects. The second one is if you want to manually aim a special heavy weapon, so like a rocket launcher or a flamethrower, you switch to manual aim and you can fire that however you want. Uh, the reason being able to manual aim and fire a heavy weapon can be useful is if you have a target hiding behind cover, you can aim a little bit past the wall and still do some splash damage on them potentially for PvP reasons. Um, or for non-PvP reasons, sometimes NPCs will get stuck in walls, uh, rocks, or in weird spots where it says can't see target, but if you manual aim near them, you can sometimes hit them still, and they'll uh, you can kill them that way. Those are like the two situations where you would ever, ever use manual aim, though. I really can't think of any other situation other than you really want to, like, increase your accuracy for hitting something, but I'm sure some people maybe at a high level use it in PvP, but... With the way latency works for any video game, I just wouldn't bother. <laughs> Alright, so we gotta steal pod parts from Valerian's pod racers. So we wanna make sure they're named a pod racer, and then we gotta beat them up. Again, most of the pod racers I think are outside. I think inside are different NPCs, so we'll just stick to outside for now. All right, so Barada says, I hear those things are some kind of new fuel system Valerian's pods are using. Find some samples of the fuel cells and the fuel dispersion tubes that they are using. While you're at it, take out their so-called pod racer champion, Dewana Watkai, down a peg or two. So he means kill him. So we got to, let's see, yeah, we got to defeat five mechanics to retrieve new fuel cells.
Uh, that's a crew chief, which we do need to defeat for fuel tubes. If you did the side quest in Moss Espa to retrieve swoop parts from those uh, kids, quote unquote, you will recognize this base layout. So two random instances using manual aim. You're deep in this game. Yeah, right. That's what Griffin says. He's like, wow, how's your second job going when I when I talk about this game? And to be fair, I don't treat this game as much as a job as I used to. And he's admitted. He's like, yeah, you're better than you used to be. <laughs> there was a period of time where, man, I was grinding hard and for no good reason. When the grind isn't fun anymore, it means you should do something else. <laughs> Either in the game or just play a different game or just do something else. Pod Racer Champion, uh, all the way in the back. Back here. Dwayne Waki. Wow, can I have your autograph? He said no. All right, we got to go back to Barada at Jabba's Palace. So let's get out of this base and find a spot to ITV. Grind's not fun anymore. Time to start a family. Uh, starting a family is the ultimate grind. Unfortunately, there's no way to speed run your child to adulthood. Well, no healthy way. <laughs> but for some parents, they don't want a speed run. They like when the kid's a baby. They like having little babs around, little babies. Let me clear my inventory soon. Next time we're on a log drive, I gotta de de uh, delete all these isomers. Let me call in a crate here while we turn this in. I could use more of those level 22 stems if I can get them. Y'all have plans? Yeah, right? Just leave your pants. I wouldn't see the pants of fa starting a family, but some people do. Rada says, this is fantastic. I'm going to give you this. The customization kit for your vehicle. We have hundreds of them lying around, so I don't really feel bad about giving you one. Oh, I should have kept that last part to myself, shouldn't I? Oh, well. What a jerk. Hey, go see Bib Fortuna. He's got something to talk to you about. And we leveled up to level 28. <gasps> I can get scatter. We go faster now. We go faster. Faster, 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 faster. Gotta go fast. Gotta go fast. Gotta go faster. Finally, a movement speed increase. <laughs> All right, here we are in a Jabaz. Hey, Bib. More and more I hear your name in the palace. I need things done. You will do them for me, yes? I am definitely here to get things done. Excellent. Our friend, there needs to be a space. Our friend Romo Vax, Vax has sent me a signal from the city way far. He has a disc. He'd like to sell it to us. You go and retrieve it. Okay, let's see if I can do that back exit I was talking about earlier. I know it exists. I'm not lying. I just don't know where. Anyways, minifig. Oh, yeah. Okay, so also for Hapling Barada, we get the transport skiff now. Which, let's redeem, actually. I do like the transport skiff. So if you right-click and generate vehicle. This is the transport skiff or desert skiff. It holds eight players, and it has lava resistance. So it's going to be super handy for Mustafar later. Um, alternatively, you can also get the Mustafar and Pan Android from an engineering crafter, and that will save you some money, too, if you'd rather sell the skiff. I like these, though. They're very handy, so I'm going to hold on to that. We'll just put it on my vehicle bar, though. Uh, is the flashpoint done? It is. I forgot to get the stuff out of the crate. Oh, well. Your bib contact? Oh, I expect someone bigger. No offense. I'm just kidding. But there's a problem. I can't give you the data. Why not? Hey, it's not a thing between us, all right? It's just that there's too much competition with your eyes on me. You know what I'm saying? You probably don't. Someone's been watching me. I wasn't sure at first, but I've managed to find their camp outside of Wayfar. I feel a lot safer if their eyes are closed. You know what I mean? You want me to kill some of them. Hey, what do you know? <laughs> you do know, did know what I mean. That's incredible. Yeah, you should kill them, uh, some of them. Come back to me when you've done that. More murder. All right, beat these guys up. Kill the wall paths. A wafer spire leader. Goodbye. <laughs> Bib, stop spending time working for Romo Vax. You work for me. His information doesn't allow him to make demands. We're through negotiation. He wants to get paid. He turns over the data now. Let's go back to Roma. So if you defeat the Wayfar Spies, you'll get these Wayfar Spy items, which go for a collection. 
where it gives you a little nice outdoor folding chair. So if you want that folding chair, you get to stand around slam for a bit. Uh, I'm not gonna do that though. So, Remo Vax. Okay, I'll be honest with you. I was hoping to sort this out when you were gone, but I couldn't solve it. My problem, that is. So I still can't give you the data. We're done negotiating with you. Are you sure you have the power to negotiate that yourself? Maybe you should contact Bib and see if that's what he wants you to do. I've talked to Bib. We're done negotiating. Oh, I see. You're just Bib's little enforcer, aren't you? You don't make the decisions, huh? You just do whatever that sharp-toothed freak wants. Let's see. Would I rather make you happy or Java? Okay, that's a fair point. Fine. But this isn't a negotiation. I'm not trying to get more money. I have a serious problem. What problem? Well, it's just that they actually um, robbed me. They broke in, hacked my system, downloaded everything, and left a virus behind that wiped out my entire mainframe. Lady Valerian was behind it. The hackers were working for her. Okay, okay, settle down. I'll retrieve the data. Oh, thank you. All right, so we gotta go save the data. So the other way. All right, so we gotta do kill some Valerian hackers and retrieve the data. I think the Day is probably downstairs. I don't quite remember where everything is in here. There's some legacy missions where I I have a unfortunately good memory of where everything is in it. And there's some where you're in it just for like a like a minute tops, and I don't remember remember anything. Now it's probably this data terminal. Yep, sure is. Alright, we're done. And scatter to get out of here. So I love Scatter. It's a pretty good movement speed increase. Lasts for like 40 seconds. Not only does it uh, increase our movement speed, but our chance to receive a glancing blow. And we resist Snare and Root, root Effects. Snares and Roots will come in the form from some NPCs, but uh, not too often. So unless we're trying to get like out of somewhere really quickly and we're aggroing enemies at Snare, that Snare immunity won't be come into play too much while we're leveling. It's going to come into more uh, effect while we're doing PvP as an officer, which we might do at level 90. We'll see. Griffin usually takes his officer into PvP, and two officers is helpful, but... I do love my smuggler PvP. Let's see if my box is still there. I think it sticks around for 10 minutes. Or maybe not quite. Oh, gone. That's fine. Oh, wait, no, there it is. Yay! Uh, it was all in the plan. Who's this Griffin guy? Uh, Griffin is Griffin Striker. He's my friend. I've known him for a very long time. Uh, I could actually send... I'll link his stream. I, I, he might still be streaming. He was doing a Halo Master Chief Collection casual race with some friends. Yep, he's still going. Looks like he's at the very end of Halo 4 right now, though. Is he the BFF? Yeah. I've known him since 2007, 2006. We met online playing Left 4 Dead in Halo. I'm back, bib baby. Ah, the data. Yes, this is what I've been waiting for. I'll get this encryption cracked right away. In the meantime, you must answer for your earlier deeds. Those spies that were troubling Romo were working for me. I've long suspected that Romo was double-crossing us. Double-crossing you? Why would Romo Vax do that? He is working for the Senex pirates. Despite your interference with my spies in Wayfar, I have been able to verify Romo's association with the Senex. To make amends to me... For killing my spies, you shall go take care of Roma Vax. I want him eliminated. Sounds good to me. I don't like being used. It's not cool, dude. We gotta kill his henchman and we gotta kill him. This is not this is, I didn't mean to take out my toad, but here it is. I like how Roma Vax's henchmen all have uniforms, it's cute. Well, some of them, most of them do. This one it's not really in any sort of uniform. It's just these guys. <laughs> Why do you have to hire so many Biff? Hey, dude. Shine. He didn't have anything to say to us either. All right, babe. Aha, you've done it. That should take care of that little problem. It's unfortunate that Romovax was a spy. My understanding is that it's a name the Senex pirates have used for many years. 
with many different agents. We should be more careful in the future. Ah, remove acts as a title, not a person. Cool. So I've completed my part. For now, yes. Here's a little something for your trouble. I don't want you to think uh, that we will fail in our generosity when someone does well. Jabba himself was impressed by this mission and would like to speak with you as soon as possible. Uh, Bib gave us his smelly boots. We have eight, eight luck. Uh, uh, I'm good, dude. All right. Hi, Jabba. I knew you were my kind of scum. Are you prepared to go back to work? Ready and willing. Good. Valerian has been frothing at the mouth for revenge due to your past work. Let's, let's keep her anger rising. Tell me what to do, mighty Jabba. Valerian has been bringing in off-world specialists to try to compete with my organization. The first is a spice drink specialist named Delrice Caprice. Eliminate the specialist. More murder. You know how I'm good at that. Scatter, get the hell out of here. Once we get charged, we'll be able to like have basically 90 seconds of just increased movement speed. It's gonna be so nice. Gonna need a couple more levels though to unlock it. It's down a row. It's all the way down here. So we gotta spend two more points. Yeah, two more points, so two more levels, and then the following level we'll be able to get it. You notice that our XP gain has slowed down quite a bit. It's due to our overall level. <laughs> we're 28 and we're doing quests for level uh, 20. This is going to be a common problem <laughs> throughout our experience here. All right, here's a spice dealer. I am here to... Is this like a normal Thorian color palette you can do? Like basically have body tattoos to be green and then have little funny eyebrows? I've never looked at a Thorian's an image designer, so I have no idea. Huh. Well. I don't know why the spice dealer was... Maybe this was a spice farm? I think he's overwatering them, though. Alright. Valerian has a nice long list of outside help she's paying. And you're going to make sure she's wasted her money. Next up is her personal bodyguard. Show him who runs tattooing. I don't know why I have a personal bodyguard standing out in the middle of the desert, but whatever. Hello, Tyrock. I don't know why you're out here, but go away. I don't think that escape pod's usually supposed to be there. I think that was a random encounter spawn. The tent is, so I think the pod spawned on his tent. Kind of ruins the tent for him, but... All right, Java says Tyrock was no match, eh? I expected as much. I mean, yeah, I have 11 levels on the guy. Valerian has assembled a team in a pathetic attempt to mount various attacks against me. They have set up strategic command and a secure outpost, but I have discovered the location of that bunker. You shall infiltrate this bunker and take out Valerian's team. All right, we're on our way there, Java. Here we are at Valerian's uh, strategic headquarters. We just gotta kill all sons of bitches. Okay, I guess not that guy, but whatever. Gotta go in the bunker and, I guess, kill specific names, sons of bitches. How big is this bunker? Uh, bigger than I would like it. It is a different layout, I think, than other ones we've seen. You know what? Let's just... Fuck them. Scatter. We don't need to kill all these guys. Jumpa says, Valerian will think long and hard before she butts heads with me again. I'd kill her. I'd rather have you do it, but it's fun... To watch her squirm. Go back and get paid for your work. Yeah, so all the NPCs we had to kill in here, if you had your over ha overhead map up, they were the yellow arrows uh, that were placed around the non-aggressive NPCs. Some of them, I think they were all were elite enemies, they had a little bit extra health, but we're so over-leveled at this point and fully buffed that it's like, whatever. So doing the target method of Valerian's, you know, slicer, not going to work. You have to go find the named NPC. If you're having a hard time finding them in the base, you could always... And your overhead map is maybe a little bit hard to read. You could always look up their names on the SWG Legends wiki. The entire uh, legacy quest is pretty much on there, mission for mission. So it works as a pretty good walkthrough if you're ever lost. All right, we're back with Jabba. He says, ah, I see you've returned, just like I asked. I hope that we can work together again some, uh, sometime in the future. For now, avail yourself of my hospitality, but watch yourself. There are no second chances around here. So we've got to talk to Jabba again. Leveled up to 29, though. Cool. And we got Jabba's Bads of Trust for his theme park. Yay. That's basically the whole Jabba's theme park, I think. Uh, but anyways, we're going to talk to Jabba. 
He says, good to see you again. Perhaps we can work together in the future. I said, I need to ask for some jury parts that you purchased from Watto. Ah, uh, yes, EVD9D. Or D9D9, yeah. Wanted it for her research. May I talk to this servant of yours? Yes, you have... You may you have my leave to do so. We're gonna be talking to a few more NPCs in here, actually, not just her, but she'll be the first. Scanning authorized personnel database individual authorized. What is it? Uh, what is its need? I am looking for a missing droid part. Droids must obey. Droids that do not obey are to be disciplined. I lack the assets necessary to discipline. Will you help? Don't forget Boba Fett. Oh yeah, we'll talk about Boba Fett after this. Thanks for the reminder. I will if you give me the part I require. Conditions acceptable. Mission parameters upload a subject status pad. All right. There's a little mini job sitting here. So we gotta go talk to Malakili, which is Jabba's. I recognize him from the film. Jabba's beast master. He says, "What do you need?" Evie says, "You don't want to give her the shock rods. That statistic bucket of bolts sent you here to muscle me." She needs the shock rods now. I don't care what she needs now. I don't have time to deal with uh, that wacko's requests. I can help you get the. Um, I can help you get the time. Oh really? Okay. Here's a list of tasks I need done. Get them done, and she gets the shock rods. Okay. Let's get this done. Good to hear that. All right. Another mini job. I'll wait. Click it. <laughs> the threesome was definitely a scene. All right. We gotta go drive around the desert a bunch so here we go all right so we came out to the crate dragon foot again we need that dna from it fun fact if we were to go a little bit further north you could actually start finding wild crate spawns between um it's like in this upper leftish or middle corner all right, we're going to go see the uh, Judlin EOP. We got to go slay some and then feed the Sarlacc pit. Uh, where the fuck? Oh, I think I drove up. I think this is an area where you come during um, one of the Jedi quests items you get. It might be for your training saber. I don't remember. I was like, wait a second. Where am I? Why are there a bunch of houses around it? That's why. Oh, this is the um, house structure I was talking about, by the way, earlier. I know I drove over it. Uh, this is the house it, schematic that you can get from completing Valerian's theme park. It's considered a large house going through there. And then it has different rooms and doors down there. It can be placed on Tatooine Lock and hilariously Dantooine. It looks a little out of place on Dantooine since, you know, most of the planet's purple. <laughs> Do you watch any Western shows? We've gotten to watching Hoarders lately. Um... There are some Western shows that I have watched back when we had uh, subscriptions to like Netflix and Hulu and stuff, but there haven't been a lot that I watched. I did watch some Hoarders with my wife. She liked watching that for a while. Um, she also liked, wa liked watching My Strange Addiction. But right now, most of the uh, content I'm consuming outside of Eastern media is YouTube. Or uh, so like... Oh, I was clicking the wrong buff. So like... Um... Uh, like a, a new H Bomber guy video just came out yesterday, but it's like four hours, so I'll watch that at some point. Um, I watch there's like a uh, YouTube channel called Pipetron. He does videos for Town of Salem, uh, specifically Town of Salem Two. Now it's kind of me and my wife watch, watch that. It's kind of fun. I watch some other video essayists, some game stuff, some travel stuff. I've gotten into watching recently. Who had some 99 cents months deal for years? So you're like, hey, why not? That's fair. Uh, I, w I just feel like I watched everything I really cared about on Hulu. All right. So when you go over to the Sarlacc, I recommend going over on a mount. The reason being is after you go to the Sarlacc, you get this debuff called Sarlacc Poison, which modifies your movement speed. So it makes you pretty slow, and then it reduces all your stats by 100. So if I was not already mounted on a jetpack, we'd be moving pretty slow. You just have the Star Spear. Star Spear's fine. It doesn't have to be a jetpack. Just on a mount. So, like, get on your get on your Flash, get on your XP-38, get on your speeder bike, get on your swoop, whatever. 
get on your skiff, your bark speeder you got from Watto, um, then go over to the waypoint, then you can just drive away. You don't have to worry about being slowed down. Because I believe on this buff, the modif the modify speed was to your, like, run speed. I don't think it applies to your mount speed. It could, but mounts generally go so fast that you won't really notice that. The only uh, movement in, uh, like, decrease you'll see with mounts is usually when you're going over water, which that does apply to flying mounts like the jetpack. <laughs> Weirdly. Wow, this water I'm flying over is really slowing me down. Okay. All right, we got to beat up these uh, Tuscan Raiders, I believe. Scatter can compensate. Yeah, we got to click the bag. Very good. All right, let me... Uh, I don't have to beat them up, but they're shooting me. All right, uh, Malakil says, very good. I sent Evie her request to shock rods, and I have created your account. So this is uh, old Ben's house. So you can go around his house and check stuff out if you feel like it. His back door is locked, apparently. So you can't look at his other room for whatever reason. Um, I think the point of interest waypoint's right here. Yep, there's Kenobi's house. Oh, there's also the panoramic point to collect. So if you're collecting those panoramic collections, there's this. I'll probably do that later. So Evie says, shock rods received. Next tax, we'll learn still equipment. Uh, recover, details upload. Okay, this is outside of Bastine, so we'll just uh, drive away from Ben's house and go to Bastine. Yes, water you're flying over will slow you down. Crossing over bodies of water slows you down regardless of your mount type. Also, I forgot Boba Fett. Sorry, Armored. <laughs> I'll get him when I go back. <laughs> I just realized it. Do you like the Mandalorian show? Yes. I think season one's still the strongest season. Um... The most recent season I did enjoy. Um, I didn't really like season two too much. Season two is fine. I just I like the spaghetti western style of season one. So then moving away from that for season two and to be more a sweeping plot was like yeah all right sure. Uh, what do you, what does everyone else think of Mando? Soon stop Ryan. Evie says, locate the cargo in one of the containers. Once uh, located, encode an override ship. So I believe it's this one. Yes. Click that. Evie says, cargo is located. Give the lifter the chip in your inventory and it will load cargo into a shuttle. So this is important. You'll see this happen every once in a while with quests, but it can be confusing. You don't, if you go up and click the load lifter, you just target it. It doesn't do anything. You have to open your inventory scroll down and then you'll see the quest item so override ship a chip that will override the programming of a binary hauler and have it pick up a designated cargo container delivered to the cargo ship make sure you're close to it then click and drag it over the loader then the quest will progress that can be confusing for some people and i don't blame them ev says a lifter reprogram next scene access the codes the automated shuttle from the head pilot terminate if necessary which means yes we're going to terminate him <gasps> can i have your autograph he said no all right, so now that we have it, Evie's time to go reprogram the automated cargo shuttle, which is right here. Shuttle arrived at Wayfar, return to the next segment. Yeah, we don't see it take it off. Uh, imagine it in your head. Out of the Star Wars TV shows, I'd probably say Andor's my personal favorite. I'm not sure if I'd say it's the best, but it's my personal favorite. Okay, so once you gain access to Jabba's throne room, either via uh, the Smuggler's Alliance piloting missions or Jabba's theme park, which you don't have to complete. You just got to get up to talking to Bib. You can come talk to Boba Fett over here. There's two things Boba Fett does. The most important one is when you talk to him, um, he'll make a comment on you saying, another of Jabba's little toys, you may want to make yourself useful by checking something out when you get a chance. You're of no use wandering around the palace aimlessly. There's a rumor that Death Watch operatives can be found on Endor somewhere in the northwestern area of the planet. So go over here. You can say the second option. Okay, anything else you can tell me? The Death Watch can be a formidable opponent and shouldn't be taken lightly. Be careful fighting against them. Then the first one sounds like you've got uh, you've dealt with them before. Mind your business. The hut wants this Death Watch and their leader dead before they cut into his business. My informants tell me that they're cutting a deal with the Black Sun even as we speak. Are you sure that's all there is to it? I don't usually give my opinion to Braves like you, but in this uh, case, I'll make a deception. All I have to say is the Mandalorians are dead and nobody's bringing them back. Now go. 
So completing that dialogue will give you access to the front door of Death Watch Bunker on Endor, which is like an open world dungeon where you can go in and um, complete different challenges. Also get loot. The loot you can get in there is for, for making the jetpack and making Mandalorian armor. There's also a process for going through to make assemble the jetpack parts and Mandalorian armor schematics. It's level 90. Um, you can sell it with certain builds, but usually it's a little, a, bit, a little bit easier if you bring one or two friends. We'll be doing Death Watch once I'm at level 90, but if you talk to Boba Fett now, you don't have to worry about coming back and talking to him later. The other thing is that if you ask for... Yeah, I, I've heard Jabba's been working you hard. Maybe you can use some help. He'll give you a quest. That's one of the Clone Relics quests that re rewards you with the Clone Wars carbine and rifle, for those familiar with it. We'll be doing that later. It's a level 50, 60-ish quest. You tried to watch the Bad Batch, but didn't make it halfway of the first episode. Wow. Uh, Bad Batch is okay. Uh, the, I like the earlier season more than the most recent one. I get what they're trying to do with the character direction, but it's not really hitting home with me. All right, so we're back with EV99. Oh, it's like 99, but they just stuck a D in there, huh? All right, so we get to pick a weapon. They are all ranged weapons. I think both the E3... The DLT20 is a rifle. The D18 is a rifle. The E3 is a carbine. I don't remember if this E11 is a rifle or a carbine, because there are E11 rifles and E11 carbines. Let's just get and find out. The Home Service E11 is, in fact, a rifle. So there's two rifle options and a carbine and a pistol. We're not going to be using it, though. My little knife does a bit more damage. EB says, task complete. Re equipment recovered. Compensation granted. Are you accessible for one more task? What do you need? Accessing database. Subject is not space qualified. Do you wish to accept employment involving combat? I guess you can get a space mission from her, which I never realized. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that. So... Yes, I will accept deployment. Escaped droids must be made example of. Are you willing? Yes, I am. Data and mission parameters uploaded subject's data pad. And this one we'll get a mail weapon for. And we got a bunch of pain bolts. These are more quest items we're going to have to drag onto NPCs when we find them. So let's bolt. Pun <laughs> not intended. To uh, the Darklighters cave. You like the Clone Wars series? I like the Clone Wars series as well. I think the later seasons are much stronger than the earlier ones. Not only do I feel like direction got better for the later episodes, but the voice actors feel like they're a lot more accustomed to playing their characters, especially Anakin's voice actor. All right, so we're going to use our snow speeder and go to the Darklighter Cave, which I logged last session. Can't believe that, though, is that they're a genetically engineered squad of soldiers. Of course, they have such clear roles. That's fair. And like I said, over the series, you do get to see their personalities a bit more. They do have personalities outside of, I am the smart one. Like Hunter's personality is basically, I am the edgelord. I am the edgelord hunter. You must give pain bolts in the pack to the droids you attempt to terminate them. Match pain bolt to proper droid. Alright. I would use scatter, but it's on cooldown, so we're just going to have to hoof it. So when you enter here, again, this cave has two ways, right and left. I think most of the droids are to the left, but I think we're going to have to go to both ends. So let's just go clockwise, shall we? Anytime I say clockwise or counterclockwise, though, I mean from a northerly orientation like this. The overhead map always points north, so this is always north, this is always south. Choosing a class in a video game. Yeah, to my point, it, I think Bad Batch is alright. Like I said, the later season I'm not as um, invested in. I get what they're trying to do with the characters. That is, it's not landing for me. Like anyone who said they've tried watching Andor and they were like, uh, and they bounced off of it, totally understand. It is definitely a slow starter. And they put a lot of balls up in the air that they don't always catch. But I like the theming, and I like the narrative, and I like the focus. Uh, my wife and I watched Ahsoka, and it was okay. <laughs> kind of. I felt like it presumed too much on the audience in terms of knowledge. All right, so we're torturing this R3 unit with the pain bolt. Now we got to destroy him. Sorry, little guy. That's what you get for running away from Jabba the Hutt. 
like they kept like in Ahsoka, they keep talking about like, oh yeah, Thrawn, we can't let Thrawn come back. Thrawn's a big deal. But if you haven't watched Star Wars Rebels or read the Thrawn novels, you have like the viewer has no idea who Thrawn is or why it's so important that they stop him from returning. I also don't think the character of Sabine was um particularly well developed on her own in the series. Again, if you skip Rebels, you might be kind of like, why is she like this? What's going on? What's her deal? Well, I don't think watching Rebels is necessary to enjoy Ahsoka. I think it helps a lot. <laughs> At least with Andor, like, even if you don't remember that Andor was from Rogue One, I don't really think it matters too much. Andor as a series can kind of stand on its own a bit, where Rebels is a little bit harder to connect with. I love this. I love the sets and the effects and production, though, as always. That's always high quality on these Disney Star Wars shows. This new trend that shows they tilt towards falling off after the first season. Older shows, it's the opposite. They find their stride in the later seasons. I think that's just the normal trend of um, stream media. That's like, you know, Netflix is always known for canceling a show after like two seasons. I think that's kind of why um, some more recent productions are the way they are. They expect to have shorter lifespans. You don't get stuff where like where it's like scrubs where it's going for a billion seasons anymore. Are they even chiss in any of the first six movies? You never saw blue human chiss people into playing Swotor? No, there's chiss in uh, Star Wars Galaxies. RA three one six. I can't give during combat. Wait. But it did the effect, but it didn't apply. Interesting. Alright. BB says, very good. The synaptic response spike well beyond the cutoff level. Return for the final discussions. Alright, out of the cave. You don't even know anything about Theron except that he's a blue guy. Yeah, like, if you watch Rebels, you get to learn a little bit about him. If you really want to know Theron, you have to read the new Timothy Zahn books. That actually gives you, like, all the insight into the character. Which I do recommend that book series. I've read the first one and even the other two. If you like war dramas slash like thrillers intrigues those books are really good and a lot of the characters that you see in star wars rebels are actually in the books a lot of the imperial characters let me specify ev says all tasks accomplished ev 99 performance efficiency 100 percent. what do you desire i want the droid head uh we want to pick the sword of the runaway that is the one-handed melee weapon katana is two lance is a pole arm knuckler is unarmed we want the one hand and we leveled up we got a pistol that i'm not gonna use Jabba has many incorrigible droids. Acquired head to steady, uh, steady neural pathway feedback, circuitry, and safety cutoffs. Built pain bolts on knowledge. Do you have the head? I kept the head as a trophy. I give it for your service. So now we have the droid head. This is what we came here for. Yay! We got it, everybody! We go back to water now. Is the Sword of the Road away better than my current weapon? The minimum damage is a bit higher, but the uh, top is lower, so nah. But it's very close. All right, I think we're done in Jabba's. We got to upgrade to Paint Target. We got Paint Target Mark Three. All right, so since I don't have any AOEs to boost still yet, uh, we're gonna get Identify Weakness, which will improve Paint Target's base damage and reduce its action cost. So let's grab that. All right, Watto, I got it. Can you put it back together for me? Ah, you have the head, I see. Very good, very good. Can you put it together with the other parts I gave you? What do you think this is? I am not your personal repairman. But you've been saying all this time that you put it together for me. Eh, uh, what is that? I said that? Okay, okay, I will do it. Just remember who helped here. Or who helped who here? What about the power? Oh, okay, she's power now, I think. Looks like a very fine droid. Would you be willing to sell it? No, Waddle, I told you I need this droid. Yes, yes, you did that all at that. I had to try, eh? I've come to expect that from you, Watto. So you're done here now, I think? Yes, I am. Well, good, Outlander. It was not so painful to work with you as I first thought. Coming from you, Watto, that is quite the compliment. Eh, get out. All right, so we got to return to our rebel agent, Carla. She's like, hmm, the da droid's data might be of interest to Special Agent Wilson, Torskull, and Kadar on Naboo. Go there and contact him. You can get to Naboo from any starport on Tatooine. Oh, no, we don't go back to her. We're starting Naboo Legacy. Wow. 
So that's all of Tatooine. That's all of Jabba's theme park and the Tatooine Legacy branch. Good job, everybody. We did it. So before we go start the Naboo Legacy, let's go do our profession quest before we get any... Actually, the Naboo Legacy is a lower level than our profession quest, but let's go do this first. So let's go to... I don't know where he is. It doesn't tell me where to go. East and north. This might be Kadara. So we might be able to two birds, one stone this. All right, so here's for the officer quest. Here's Sergeant Yomnia. This looks like the first guy we talked to, but in a different clothing, different hair color, same style. But whatever. The Arisons tell me that you're a pretty good soldier, but before we get into officer training, I need to see it for myself. Is something you want me to do? It's time for more combat training. Get used to it. A soldier's life is about combat conflict. I mean, I guess you're right. Fine, I'm ready. Good, here are yours. Let's see how you handle them. So we gotta go defeat some mummers. We're gonna go out there later. So I guess I'm not gonna do this immediately. I don't wanna be driving back and forth all the way in Naboo. We'll be there for a later legacy quest. So we'll do that then. <laughs> it's actually on a Naboo legacy. <laughs> Optimize efficiency. That's what we're here about, right? That second, having fun's first. So, Special Agent Wilson Torsell. This is the Rebel Contact. Like I said, once you pick a side in Rebel or Imperial in the Legacy Quest, you're stuck with it. So, here is our Rebel Contact in Kadara Nabu over here, but keep your voice low. Carla Bastra sent me to you. I'm guessing I'm whispering that. She told me to expect you. She says you've done good work for our cause thus far. That is good news, but we're not done yet. The droid that you assembled on Tatooine is missing critical components. It is an obscure Old Republic model, but you may find some of the parts here in Abu. Yes, what is the next step? There is an Old War bunker on the beach near here. Rumor is that experimentation was conducted on trade Federation droids at this bunker leading up to the Battle of Naboo. Go to that bunker and search for any remnants of those droids or clues as to where to find an example of their AI. I'm on my way. Excellent. Return to me once you've found any information about the Old Republic experimental droid AI. Cool, let's roll. All right, so we got to search for the old bunker, which I think I just have to run down to the bottom and click something. Again, we're pretty overleveled. These guys are 20, we're 30. <laughs> so I'm just going to be running by most of these enemies. Save us some time, too. Yep, a mysterious device of unknown origin. Click. This is Colonel Panaka. Why are you using Sergeant Willock's comm? I haven't heard from him over a week. Report to me immediately, please. I'm sending my location. He's like, who is this? Who's on this line? Come talk to me. Uh, 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 there's a reactor leak here, sir. Uh, boring conversation anyways. <laughs> Am I right, folks? Good, there you are. I was beginning to worry it. Uh, you wouldn't be coming. What can you tell me about the old war bunker? Hmm, okay, that was a research bunker. Naboo officers examined Trade Federation George there. The better we knew, uh, knew what made them tick, the better we were able to stop them. Are there any relics left from the old war bunker? In the bunker? No, it was stripped from all important equipment. <laughs> And from such a long time ago, any old Republic technology has long since moved to other research facilities. How do I find those facilities? You don't. You need to be able to access classified information in the RSF mainframe in Thebe, and you lack required security clearance, but I might be able to help you or get you started anyway. I appreciate your help. As it happens, I'm always in need of good help. Uh, cable recruits for the Royal Security Forces. If you're interested, you can start right away. The SCAC tippers are brewing up some trouble, and your first assignment would be, out, be able to find out what. What would you need me to do? First, we need to find out what they are planning. Go out around the city and surround and surrounding area and fight some skak tippers. If you find any information or a clue, follow up on it. Report back to me when you find anything significant. I'm on my way. So Colonel Panaka is not a rebel or imperial agent. He's a member of the Royal Security Forces. This is where we start basically what is kind of a long Royal Security Forces theme park, which will add up to us getting access to the RSF mainframe, which will get us access to more information about the droid. Now, the thing that always confused me about this quest narratively is we go into this bunker, find somebody else's, some RSF agent, like Sergeant's comm, and then he's like, come talk to me. He's like, good. Okay, so you're poking, he just says, you're poking around the bunker. We ask him some questions, he's fine with it. He's like, all right, well, uh, I need more people for the RSF anyways, want to join? Like, he's not going to ask why we were in the bunker, what we were doing there. Like, for all he knows, we could have murdered his sergeant and we could be an agent. Like, narratively, this it's a pretty huge leap in logic for this guy to tolerate us, I feel. But the narrative's not always the strongest point of this game. Yeah, that's right. So some uh, projects that the Legend staff are working on are adding a plant for Lucia continuing the Jedi theme park that they started. And I've heard something about City 2.0 from some senators in the Senate chat. 
which is an update to this in-game city system. I don't know what that will look like, but I guess that's a thing I've heard about. Um, they're likely working on a lot of other stuff that either I am not privy to or I'm just forgetting. City, up to, city update 2 looking wild? I believe it. If, if it's anything as intricate as the farming and ranching systems, I believe it. There's no legal way for you guys to take money, is there? No. I don't think there's a clean way of taking money. Because even if, like, you would just ignore the, like, intellectual property aspect of Star Wars, there's still the intellectual property aspects of, like, the code base this is running on. It's not all original code. A most of it is still Sony Online Entertainment's code. Okay, so we killed some skak tippers. We got a radio. Now we gotta use this radio in our inventory. Again, there's another one going to inventory. Look at it. Click it. Uh, so the radio goes, just go. Okay, fine. Here are the coordinates again. Just hurry. We have to get these weapons out of sight quickly. All right, so now we gotta go confiscate some weapons. Do I just have to defeat maniacs? Yeah, I guess I just have to beat up maniacs. Nothing found. Ah, good. It's a percent chance. There's one more group of three of this that I don't get it from here. All right, got the last crate. Panaka must be told. Let's go inform Colonel Panaka. Also, pretty wild that we start working for a colonel and the colonel's like, I'm short on people. I feel like this would be more something for like a sergeant or like a staff sergeant, but what do I know? Maybe colonel means something different in the Royal Security Forces. Hey, a little AD ATST. Should I flag up? 1v1 is level 30. <laughs> There's a collection item over there. Some blade. Colonel Panaka. The Skak Tippers are smuggling in weapons. This sounds bad, but you did well in recovering some of the weapon grades. An idea why they need the weapons. Hmm, maybe. One of the last communications from Sergeant Willock regarding a plan to steal the bank... Uh, to steal the bank terminals from Kadar. The whole terminal... That's like, go. That's like I'm just gonna steal the whole ATM. Is that shit usually bolted down and heavy? That's right. They plan to hack into them and gain access to the bank accounts to everyone in Qatar. So they're gonna steal the terminal, then hack into it. Whatever. Not that I believe they could actually pull it off, but we cannot let them get that far. I'm sending you to the Sulner hideout. Where is the hideout? It's on a small island east of Kadara, following the beach to the east, and you shouldn't have any trouble finding it. Take out as many of them as you can, then find their leader, Johnny Skak, and take him down as well. If you succeed, they won't be planning an attack on Kadara again anytime soon. I'll take care of it. Good luck, and thank you. So we have to defeat Skak Tippers at the island hideout. Cool island, guys. If you guys ever want to uh, have a job that's extremely underappreciated and you'll probably never be fairly compensated for the work you do, become QA for, like, anything. I have I know people in the game industry and in software development industry, and, uh, yeah, man, uh, QA does not get the respect or compensation they deserve. That's arduous work, man. Not that programming isn't arduous either, but uh, QA is... A lot. I forget where Johnny's in here, so I'm going to just target Johnny. Okay, he's down there. Hi, Johnny. Bye, Johnny. Panaka says, good work. I need you to be a great fit for the RSF. Yeah, I'm a great at murdering, dude. I've always been had an eye for your kind of talent. You mean murderers? Report back to me and we'll wrap up this assignment. So after you killed defeat Johnny Skak... You'll get an item in a turn called a journal. A journal. The smudge name on the cover reads Jonthal Mazoon. Let's read it. Object starts a quest. <gasps> a quest? Yeah, except the life and death of Johnny Skag. So this is an iconic side quest that tells you the story of Johnny Skag, how he went from RSF agent to leader of the Skag Tippers, and uh, gives you the, the iconic item, uh, Nourishing Vitacaps. They boost your constitution. This is uh, another reusable buff. That basically you'll use until you're like level 85 um, using uh, officer tactical stims. It occupies the same slot. So I recommend doing it. It's not like a ball. It's not like a make or break buff. But hey, man, free health is free health. 
The first journal entry says, I've been given my first assignment as an RSF agent. It's not glorious, but it's a start. I'm to reduce the night spider population around Kadara. I suppose I should get started. Sign, jean paul Mazoon. I can see why he changed his name. Not as catchy as Johnny Skak. Even though Skat sounds kind of like Scat, but maybe Scat's not a term in a... <laughs> in Star Wars. Alright, so... We can't ITV from the island, but we could ITV from over here, I believe. And we're gonna ITV actually to Kadara's shuttle port, I think. Alright, Colonel Panaka. You did well, very well. I think it will be a while before the Skak Tippers try anything in Kadara again. Well, until someone else comes along anyway. About joining the RSS. Yes, of course. I like your eagerness. Oh yeah, now we're a private. Yay! We got our 10th badge! Yay! I like your eagerness. As promised, I now make you an official member of the Royal Security Forces of Nabu. You are now private of the Royal Security Forces. Welcome aboard, Private uh, Valimo. If you don't have a surname, does this use your first name? Probably. How high is my security clearance level? Right. You'll need to have a higher level of security clearance to access the RSF mainframe in Theed. For that, you'll need to take more RSF assignments and complete them successfully. Unfortunately, I don't have anything at the moment that will require your attention. Is there anywhere else I could get an RSF assignment? I suggest you ca uh, speak with Captain Typho and Corinne. I'll let him know to expect you. I'll report to Captain Typho and Corinne. So we gotta go to Corinne to sp speak to Captain Typho, but let's go do the Johnny Skak side quest first. So we gotta uh, defeat some Night Spires, which you'll find outside of Corinne over here on the southwest side. And around this area. You'll see a big boss mama spider. Yeah, Noct Noctrola. Don't kill her. She has a very long respawn timer. <laughs> and you do need to kill her later. So, I guess I'll just try and pick out some night spiders without killing her. Luckily, I don't really have any AoEs, AoEs to worry about right now. I did aggro her. We'll just ignore her. <gasps> Level 31. Wow. All right, so there's more some there's more spiders back here a little bit further to the south. So, let's get them. Throw a grenade. We're going to piss off a snake, but whatever. Wow, these nades are really losing their effectiveness, huh? The only thing they're good at right now is uh, aggroing everything, I suppose. Ooh, that dot hurts. Ooh, spicy. I'm actually taking damage out here. Yeah, they, yeah, I know. I went and read the wiki, and then I did Control F in the Legends Discord, and I like just put Jawa Vendor, and I only saw one person asking, "Is it in the game yet?" All right, skipping ahead to another entry. It looks like I did a good job with the Night Sister Night Spider cleaning up because my next assignment is to hunt the ferocious Night Spider known as Nocturlon. This will not be an easy jomphal. And I, uh, a following entry, I failed to kill Nocturlion. He, he proved to be a tough challenge. If I hadn't been injured, I would think I would have got him. Interesting that this spider is a he, because I think in spider, traditional spider um, development, the females are larger. Not that I'm an expert on spiders. I hate spiders. Spider cannon. I, I know it's a fantasy game. Whatever. But. Skipping ahead again. Despite failing against this night spider nocturnal, my superiors seem to think I have gotten a, lo a lot of potential as an RSF agent. I'm glad that they told me that because I've been having doubts recently. My next assignment, though, shows they truly do have confidence in me. I'm going to break up a local small time group of smugglers who call themselves Beachcombers. If possible, I'm supposed to arrest their leader, Franris Bulgar. So I believe a uh, lot. Wait, what the fuck? So the leader's name is Fanris Bolgar in the journal, but the NPC is Lonley Bolgar. Defeat Lonley Bolgar. Jonathan Mazoon arrested Fanris Bolgar as well as many of the Black Beachcombers, but they still operate in the area. The current leader is Fanris's brother of Lonley. Defeat Lonley Bolgar. He's usually a little... Okay, this makes sense then. You just had to read the journal for it to come together. I was like, what? <laughs> kill with fire. Uh, kill it with anything that I don't have to touch it with. I wish I had artillery strike already. I would have artillery strike the spider. From like 50 meters away. But instead I ran up and hit it with a knife. 
Oh yeah, some of you maybe know some inventory earlier. I looted a color crystal. You can loot color crystals from NPCs while you're leveling up. Um, they are. Uh, they have a two percent elemental damage bonus, and then their element is in the description. So purples are usually electricity. I think reds are usually fire. Blues are usually cold, etc. Um, you'll only get above two percent for special lightsaber crystals. So that and that's later in the game. I just, for now, just use whatever color you like if you're a Jedi. Also, we got the ATR TD from um, Colonel Panaka. I might keep that and use it. For now, I'm not going to worry about it. So finishing Colonel Panaka's quest is what gives you the ATR team. ATR TD now. All right. We got a few more beachcombers. Oh, yeah. You also get power crystals. Uh, you can buy, like, fair is pretty low. You can buy like select power crystals or even premiums for pretty cheap on the bazaar. I would just go search for them on the bazaar. You can even filter for them under the component category, lightsaber component. You can filter for crate pearls and power crystals. Power crystals add to your lightsaber's damage bonus. Low level lightsabers like your training saber, you can't fit a power crystal in, but as you get higher generations of lightsabers crafted, you will be able to fit more and more power crystals into them. So at, a very, so at your current level, like level 30-ish, you probably don't need to worry about it. Okay, the next journal actually says, Further in the journal, following up on my arrest of Fanris, Bolgar, and his gang of beachcombers, I need to recover as much of their smuggled goods as I can. The way beachcombers smuggle things in the areas have them airdropped into the sea. They then pick up the crates of goods as they wash up on the shore. My current assignment is to scan the beaches nearby and recover any crates of smuggled goods I find. Um, this one always I mess up on. I always miss a crate. So let's see if I can uh, get all these first try. One, uh, I think this is the one furthest down the shore. I don't think any of the crates are beyond where players can put houses. Yeah. So basically start from this end. All the way up here by this palm tree past the spiders and beachcombers you probably defeated. And just drive down. Some of them are pretty close to the shoreline like this one. Some of them are a little bit further up like next to the trees. None of them should be all the way up the hill. None of them are inside Kadara. They'd all be outside of Kadara. They might be inside the city zones, but not like in the walls. Honestly, the ATRT might be faster because then I wouldn't have to call my jetpack every other time. That's the inconvenient thing about jetpacks, as I mentioned before. They pack themselves automatically when you dismount them. Uh, so I can't just leave my jetpack out to hop on and off of it. So can more conventional speeders kind of went out in convenience in some cir circumstances. Usually they're near other beachcombers, so... Scatter. There's one here, another one over here. And see it because of the tree. There are such things as sea snakes. The other one might be further down the beach. I might have just dismounted it. Yep. Okay, here's the last one. Cool. I didn't miss one. Yay. Okay, more from the journal. I'm very excited about my next assignment. I'm going to infiltrate the Skak Tippers by posing as a minor criminal and then joining them. This is the kind of thing exactly why I became an RSF agent, John Thal. And in a later entry, after being accepted as a Skak Tipper, I have been able to help foil many of their plans by reporting them to the RSF handler. They've made many arrests thanks to me. Okay, I have to arrest Skak Tippers. Ske defeat Skak Tippers anywhere in Naboo. I kind of drove away from them. Uh, I guess I'll go take them out their main base, because we might have to come back here anyways. I don't remember. <laughs> we got this fitness drink from a quest on Tatooine. It's pretty good. Gives you 20 in con, stamina, and agility. Not as good as those officer uh, attacks we were calling down, but... Pretty good compared to some of the other buffs we were getting. Alright, just one more skak tipper, and then we'll be all done with this portion. We're almost done with the uh, life and death and jolly skak. Towards the end of the journal, this is... No, how could this happen? We killed that man. I killed him. No turning back now. Another entry. I haven't reported into my RSF handler in a long time. I can't now and I can't ever get in another. Tonight is my time. I take leadership of the Skaktivers out... <laughs> out to die. 
Uh-oh, tiny baby typo. Uh, of Kadara. I mean, I guess I'll note that. Take the leadership of the Skak Tippers outside of Kadara, and I take my Skak Tippers name. The past is nothing. It's gone. Only my future matters, and it awaits. All I know... Or all I have to do is complete my initiation and take down some of Borvos. Uh, it's nothing to do with Jompel. Soon will be Johnny Skak. We have to beat up Borvo thugs? Oh, I know where these are. Back to Kadar. Okay, so we completed the stage smoked machine draft schematic. Uh, there's some collections in the game with collecting items are repeatable. So even though I completed this, if I go to the smoke ignition device, you'll see it turns green in the description. I can add it again. Every time I complete it, I'll get this draft schematic. All right, so if you're looking for Borbo thugs in the area, the easiest group is there's this base past the Imperial Lambda shuttle, or yeah, I think that's a little Imperial outpost, right over here full of Borbo NPCs. So we can just come right over here and got to defeat 18 of them, which I don't even know if there's 18 here. Yeah, it looks like there's 13 thugs here, so we're gonna have to wait for a few more to respawn. There are some more outside Thede, but we're not going to Thede next. We're going to Corinne, and I don't believe there's any Borbo thugs in that area. Every once in a while with one doing quests in this game, you'll get a thing where you have to kill a certain number of NPCs and there just aren't enough around for it. Granted, this one says Borbo's anywhere. You don't have to do it here. But honestly, all the other Borbo's are kind of out of the way in my mind. So screw it. Just do it here. Jonathan Mazoon, aka Johnny Skak, started as a loyal member of the RSF, but fell when his life as a Skak tipper overwhelmed him. Sounds like they accidentally murdered somebody and he felt like he couldn't go back to RSF. Help him to rest in peace by bringing his journal to his mother's gravestone, which is in Kadara. So back into Kadara we go. That's another reason why I didn't leave, is I'm like, I think there's another part in Kadara. So if I go to like feed, I'm gonna have to come back to Kadara anyways. Might as well just stay in Kadara. Task completed. I wonder who gives us the Nourishing Vita Caps. So this is a reusable buff, so if you run out of other buff items, you can use this. And it'll boost your constitution by a little bit. I think it's maybe 20 or something. I mostly get it every time for the nostalgia reasons. So we'll hold on to that. Right now I have some other buff items to be using. Alright, so we have to go to Karin and report to Captain Typho. There are two shuttle ports in Korean. One's on the east side near the cloner. The other one's on the north side, kind of pretty close to the starport. You can see the starport right there. Perk of going here, though, is that I can just, you know, immediately mount. Don't have to run out of anywhere. Okay. So Captain Typho is going to give us a lot of stuff to do. So let's speak to him. Colonel Panaka said he was sending some re some recruits my way. I'm not sure what your particular specialties are, but I have tasks open in three divisions. The RMR, the Police Force, and the Naboo Defense Force. Let's do... So, if you do the Naboo Defense Force, it gives you piloting missions. What we're basically doing here is completing missions to get RSF faction points. Faction points, of course, being these things. To rank up through the... Um, Security force. Actually, I don't see it. So maybe it's just, I don't know, marked another way. Basically, you don't have to do all of these. I think you have to do two of three. I don't have any starship uh, leveling yet. I was going to start that after we finish Naboo. So I'm going to skip the Naboo defense force. But if you do some piloting up on now, I think as long as you're like tier, like you've done a little bit of piloting, like you can handle tier two ships, you should be fine. I actually haven't done this, but we'll start with the police work. I want you to do some investigating. Check out the Maulers and see what they're up to. Build pastry. Mmm, yummy pastries. You know what? Maybe I will drop a snow speeder out here. This drive is always longer than I think it is. I think I could put one right in front of these homes. It's probably as close as I could get. I don't really need a dark light. I don't need Jebel's Palatine. Let's give her that first.
Kill 15 Maulers. Uh, let's defeat these guys. They're right here. Am I forgetting any buff? Nah. Hey, guys. You know the terrible part about all this, too, is I'm missing an AoE still. And even if I respect and went into the um, uh, other tree, I can't get to the bottom row, and the bottom row is where you get a melee AoE. I still need to, I think I need to be level 34 to reach the bottom. It's either 34 or 36. So, yeah, Officer doesn't have really any AoE options for a really long time. Which is a shame, because they end up being one of the best AoE professions in the game by the end. <laughs> that just takes them a long time to get any. Commando get grenades, like, immediately. I still have only two combat abilities. I guess if I was in this tree... I'd at least have a Decapitate and Leg Strike, which do pretty good damage, both of them. All right, those are 15 Mar Maulers. The captain says the Maulers may have been after something specific while the siege was occurring. Several Maulers champions have been taking experimental weapons, track them down and bring them back. Anything they took. I think there's a champion over here. Maybe it's just the Lords. Yeah. What's in here? Mauler, Mauler Master, Mauler. I guess all the champions are at the bottom of the bunker. That's why I always say, like, leveling as a Jedi is not too bad. Yeah, you don't get as much AoE as a commando, but Force Sprint, or... Yeah, Force Run is the best, like, movement ability in the game for a single player. So all this running around inside places where you can't call them out, so you definitely save some time. Oh wait, shit! I didn't look at their waypoint. It's I know it's sending me to another group of maulers somewhere else. I didn't realize I was a thousand meters away. Watch, check your waypoints, everybody. Yeah, here they are. Reading's important. Hey guys. Cool. Ah, you've collected the missing weapons. The Mullers are planning something. I need you to find what it is. They may have intel on them. Find what they're planning. All right, so we got to go over and get intel from Muller Apprentices over here. The Muller Apprentices back there might apply, but this is just a camp of a bunch of apprentices. So, you know, let's just do our business here. Wow, exactly seven. Convenient, as long as you're the only player here. The messages are encoded and we'll need a device. One of uh, one of the ones they're using. There's a good chance the Muller Lords might have one if you could track one down. Which the Muller Lords are back up there. Okay, we don't even need to go inside to get the Lords. There are a couple right over here. I don't even know if there's any inside. I wasn't paying that much attention. Nothing found. Found. Cool. Well, I guess I'll beat this guy up. Okay, so now we found the encoder. We have to take the RSF computer and feed, and we'll let the computer do the hard work for us. Now we gotta go to feed. Yay! We're not driving there, though. That'd take a while. Uh, I think shuttle C is the closest to the palace. All right, so here is the Royal Dabuyan Palace. We'll be spending a lot of time going in and out of here. <laughs> Uh, it has been updated on Legends with a cool look, by the way. If you watched my update video back from June, you would have saw some of this featured. Uh, a lot of quality of life stuff, like these uh, Starship Terminals being here. So if you're doing RSF piloting, you won't have to go as far. But we're going to go in, go left over here. And here is the terminal that we're going to be returning to a lot for a lot of missions later on. This is also the terminal that Panaka was talking about, where we need higher clearance to get information. But Naboo RSF secure connection after your query with Decoder. Decoding Mahler data. Decoded. All right. The captain said the messages are decoded. A new Mahler chieftain is grabbing for power over at the old leader. He's planning to attack a large forest on before he can get organized. All right. So we got to go back to the Mahler base. Okay. So we got to stop the Mahler usurper. The guy who's trying to take over. Because he will be even worse, I guess. What's his name? A Mahler warlord. Uh oh, there it is. No, he's literally called a Mauler usurper. <laughs> All the way down at the bottom, huh? Gort, come back and see me, and we'll take care of the paperwork for this job. You've done well. 
course. It's not uh, it's not law enforcement if there's no paperwork. Alright, we're back with Captain Typho. We got the badge, Arts of Lance Corporal. We went from private to Lance Corporal. Nice. The Maulers will know you're on site. We'll know you on site and hopefully show you a little respect. You did excellent work. What would you like to do now? Uh, so we can do piloting, more police force work, I guess. Dougal Bell stars at the top of our current most wanted list. Here on Abu. He leads the Mauler Disciples. I want you to see if you can track him down for us. Okay. Where you at? Where's your boss? Captain said that was exactly what we expected. One of our... One of the Muller Disciples had a map. We're uploading the corners to your dad bag. Go check it out. See if you can find Dougal. We're gonna... ITV to New Prometheus. I believe they have a shuttle. Yes, and I'll be closer. New Prometheus is a player city, by the way. That is not a NPC city. I don't even remember coming out here before Real Talk. Hi, Officer Knock. You're the exact same Thorian as that spice dealer I killed earlier on Tatooine. Weird. Go putting something behind that grace over there. Maybe you should check around. The concealed package match is the meeting point for Dougal and his troops. Go there and take care of him before he gears up. Why did I have to come out here if you had an officer here? Why didn't you just have the officer look at it? What the fuck? What do you pay these people for? No wonder you need more recruits. They're not doing anything. Hey, guys. Hand on the butt crack. That's cool. Okay, bye, guys. All right, back with Captain Typho. We're now an RSF corporal just flying through these ranks. Um, the venomous weapon sprays for melee. Yeah. All right, Dougal is finished. That's good. We may have to update our most wanted list now. See who's next in line for attention. What's next for you? More police work. Our police force work is up to date. I don't have anything else in the area right now. Okay. I like to do marine work. The Mars Stronghold is a difficult place to get into, but I need someone with sabotage their weapon caches. Cool. I'm, I'm your person for sabotage. All right, we're here at the Mall of Stronghold. We gotta go find a bunch of boxes and blow them up. Let's do it. Scatter. Fuck your weapons. Ba-boom. Kaz has been finding recipes on um, Instagram. Usually we just, like, search things on Google or something. But, you know, the last two rece Instagram recipes we've tried have been winners. So, you know what? Not bad. Next time I eat this, I might have to eat it with a... Uh got these cool tortillas they're like protein rich tortillas with like garlic in them or something at first i was like i don't know it looks kind of like maybe a little too earthy but not nah, it just tastes like pita bread it just tastes like straight up it just tastes like pita bread i'm like oh sick all right back to typho typho says good work that should keep them busy for a while trying to accumulate more weapons it should give us an edge in apprehending most of them before they can prepare an assault against any of our military sites all right, back with Typho once again. We're now a sergeant, flying through the ranks. And without of the 32, oh boy, it's like a better paint target again. The next level is going to be more exciting. We'll get charge. All right. Um, <clears throat> Typho says, great work with those explosives. Are you ready to do some more work for me? I like how also blowing up with things. He just gives you grenades. Which, I think these grenades are better than the ones that I've been calling in, so... Cool. Uh, more... Oh, I like to advance through the ranks. Well, you're at the highest clearance I can grant you. Perhaps you should go see Puja Nabiri in Theed. Here, I'll show you what it looks. So yeah, I don't need to do any more missions. You can if you want, like if you want more XP. Or if you want to get the RSF backpack. I think if you do all the marine missions, he'll give you the RSF backpack that grants you terrain negotiation. Uh, I ain't got time for that, though. We gotta go talk to P Pon Pooja Nabiri, uh, in Theed. Uh, I'm just gonna take the starport. Okay, we're here with Poo uh, Pooja. Good work you're here, 
Colonel Panaka told me to expect you after you finish assisting Typho. There are two assignments for you. What are the assignments? The first is to help investigate a terrorist attack that just took place here in the. The second is a bit more personal. I like to keep it a bit quiet if possible. A friend, Hugo Ekner, has a dilemma with which he needs assistance. Colonel Panaka assured me you can be discreet. Let's go with Hugo first. I'll leave it to you fill you fill you in. Okay, I'll go see Hugo. Can I get the other one too? Tell me about the terrorist attack. We will report to Major Harvin Fratchels for more on the terrorist situation. He will let you know what you can do to help. I'll report to the sergeant. Can I do both? All right, can I double dip here? I can. That's even more efficient. Yes. Sometimes you can double dip on um, multi-part missions, and sometimes you can't. Like with Typho, I couldn't. I don't think I could get out more than one, but I can with her. So here's Hugo. Oh, you're the one Pooja sent. I have a bit of a dilemma and need your help. Did she tell you much? No, she said you'd fill me in. Right, well then, this is it. My son, Carl, has got into a bit of trouble. Seems he has a gambling habit and managed to lose quite a bit of money. To make matters worse, he owes money to both Dark Walkers and Skak Tippers. Uh-oh. He owes money to both of them? Sadly, yes. Very, uh, not very proud parent here. Sadly, yes, I do not have the means to pay his debt, especially with all the interest and such. Both are willing to let me off Carl's debt to them by undertaking various tasks, mostly against their rivals. I'm hoping you can help me with that. What do you need me to do? Well, both the Skak Tippers and Dark Walkers view Borbo's uh, organization as a rival and want them knocked down a peg or two. They want me to handle this kind of thing so that it cannot be attributed to them. I'll take care of it. Thank you. Hopefully you will be done with this quickly. And you get Hugo's body spray. So... Some of you might recognize this item from the Tatooine Legacy. We had Higo's Body Spray as an option when helping out with Carla, I believe, or somebody earlier during, uh, either during or prior to Wado, helping Wado. So you might have been like, Higo's Body Spray, what the hell is this about? Uh, this is where it's from. <laughs> Which, considering his Body Spray gives you a strength bonus. Damn, dude, what kind of body odor are you cooking with? All right. So we're going to do this first since it's on the way. Here's Major Harvin. There you are. We have no time to waste, so I'll get right to it. Terrorists have attacked the section of the feet. We need to neutralize the terrorists and aid in recovering from the attack. What should I do, sir? Eager to start quite good. This part of the city is where the attack took place. Help round up any remaining terrorists in the area. I'll be in communication with them. further updates as necessary. All right. I like help remove terrorists is help slaughter. I need my bowl for emotional support. What's my emotional support bowl? Oh, oh, good. There's a Pico Pico Albatross right next to the quest area, which, by the way, that is a level 81 champion. We really want to avoid that. So that's great. <laughs> that happens. You'll notice, by the way, when I'm questing around Naboo, that you're going to see me, like, randomly tabbing over to Pico Pico. So this is why. This is why. <laughs> Not bad to solo as level 90. Uh, I don't think I can as this. Not as a level 32. <clears throat> the manager says we've received word that the terrorists have placed some bombs through this section of Theed and that they have attacked. Find disarm the bombs. Now we deal with the bombs. Uh, the bombs are another item where I commonly miss one or two. So this might take me a couple passes to find them all. Um, I'm also going to uh, put my speeder bike on my bar, I guess, really fast. Because... Jetpack's not super helpful here because of having to constantly mount and dismount it. So I'd rather be able to just uh, do that rather than calling it, waiting it for go away. Remember if I click this one. Yay! That's the other thing. Sometimes I'll see one and I'll be like, yeah, I got that one, and I actually didn't. Okay, I think the last one's over here. Is it around here? Yes, there it is. Okay, now we gotta go get some medical supplies to restock the droids. Major says specifically, we need to restock the medical droids with supplies. Go to the hospital, get more supplies, and bring them to the medical droids throughout the attack zone.
I overshot this one. I thought it was behind the fence. These are easy. They're all just in the corners of the building, basically. The exterior corners. Next to these pallets. Shouts for not making me go in the hospital. If they scatter these throughout the interior of the hospital and had to use all the elevators to get him, that'd be a nightmare. Okay, so we're just handing these out to all the droids that we saw earlier. This is another one where I'm like, did I click that one already? And then you'll probably see me go click the same one more than once. Some of them are hidden like this one. So do the our staff medical droids refuse to tend to the terrorists or <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, who are this here for? Are there RSF people? I assume. All right, let's go back to the Major. Go with the terrorists. Are you ready for the next part of the assignment? Yes, I'm ready to continue. Report to Sergeant Mercius Bragg of the RSF Intelligence Division to find him in the cantina. Okay, we'll do that later. We gotta go deal with some Borvo thugs right now. These were the Borvo thugs I was referring to earlier, by the way. You could come defeat these for... Johnny Skak, but you'd have to go back to Kadara to click on his mother's grave, so... Meh. I don't know how much time save it is coming here instead of just defeating the ones outside the city and waiting for the minute for them to respawn to finish it off. Definitely for leveling commando, get cluster bombs as soon as possible, which should be easy at the top of your first tree. Steel crates of droid parts from Borvo. Okay. Every time I see Borva, by the way, I do kind of want to want to say Bravo just because it's how close it is. But I know that's wrong. Uh, that's a database system. There's the crate. Great. Great. These guys are reluctant to attack, not because of the level gap. Oh, no. Uh, because they saw me murder everybody with a knife. And they don't want any of this. Where's the last one? Uh, I think I I think it's in the hall hallway. I missed one. There it is. Sabotage the database systems. Okay. Hey guys, I didn't want to kill you, but you're kind of harsh in my vibe. They have snares. I can't just ignore them. Because my scatter's on cooldown. If it wasn't on cooldown, I'd just ignore them. Okay. I think is, one of these terminals is outside, right? Or is it the, it's just the antenna? Okay, I'm crazy. What's up, Syntheticon? Do you do the entire legacy quest on each new character? No. <laughs> no. Uh, I've done the legacy quest. This would be my third time on Legends. The first time I did it was on a character on my medic, and I did it up until level 50-ish, so the end of Naboo. Well, I guess 40-ish. And then I AFK level to 90 from there. Because um, that's usually when I burn out, is like near end of Naboo. Um, uh, my commando, I did the entire legacy quest with a friend, uh, Griffin Striker. We leveled from five to 90. So we didn't do the Tensari point station, but we did everything else. We didn't finish legacy. We did legacy through Naboo and then we went to Kashyyyk. Then after Kashyyyk, we went to Nims and then after Nims, we went back to Kashyyyk and then we went to Mustafar. Um, and then on the character that I deleted to make room for this character, I, um, I think it'd be faster to ITV to the other side of feed than it would be to drive. Uh, and then um, on this character, my plan is to do all the legacy quests. I actually have never completed it through Rory. When I did it on live the first time, they only had up to Naboo. Corellia wasn't implemented yet. And then the furthest I've gotten on Legends was I got like halfway through Corellia. And then I said, screw this. And then I just 
didn't finish it. The legacy quest is definitely something that um, I always tell people to do, like all the way through, especially if you're a new player, because it gives you a lot of credits, it gets you around the galaxy, you learn a lot of the systems in a comfortable manner. But uh, <laughs> I haven't really done it all myself, <laughs> so maybe I should, uh, you know, do more. I think on live I got up to Talus. Sergeant Mercius Bragg. Hello, Major. Wait, Major Frank tells sent you Danny. Yes, he did. All good. I'm Sergeant Bragg of the RSF Intelligence Division. We need to find out who was behind the terrorist attack on our city before it, things escalated further. So far, no one has claimed responsibility. Any idea who it might have been? More than likely, it was one of the four primary criminal organizations in the area. The Dark Walkers, the Skak Tippers, the Mummers, or the Borvos Gang. How do we find out which it was? Tapping a transmitter into their communication antenna at their bases. Start with the Dark, dark Walkers because a distraction by attacking. Uh, cause a distraction by attacking and then place the transmitter. I'll be in touch with further instructions once you're done at the Dark Walkers base. I'm on it. Good. Go to it. All right. Well, we'll do that in a minute. We're going to finish. Everyone hates Borvo. You need to be careful near the Western Cloner. There's a high level super battle droid that wanders this area. I don't remember what it's for. It might be for the Azure Cabal. All right. Is that another? Uh, yep, that's another Albatross out there. Cool. All right. Give me your autograph. He said no. Okay, now let's go back to Hugo, which we are going to go back to Hugo before we go to. The Darkwalker Cave, because Hugo is going. The next step of Hugo's quest is going to involve going to the Skak Tipper and Darkwalker Caves. So if we go talk to Hugo first, we can do Birds One Stone this again. High efficiency. Hello, Hugo. Well, that's done, but unfortunately, there's more. It gets more complicated. What makes it complex? Well, the thing is that they, each time they want me to attack the other. Fortunately, they do not know that Carl owes both of them and is working for each, but I can't risk them finding out, so I'm going to send you to the Skak Tipper contact, a uh, Darkwalker contact. They can give you your next task and hopefully do so without the other knowing. Who are these contacts? Skak Tipper is a contact of Toph Henro with a Darkwalker was known blah, blah, blah. Uh, we're going to go talk to the Skak Tipper first because they're going to have me go mess with the Darkwalkers and we got to go to the Darkwalker cave. Can I get the other one or do I have to do... Oh, I can get both. Cool, let's get both. Yay, and we'll go talk to both. <laughs> Efficiency. Yeah, Hugo's body spray. Oh no, it's luck. His body spray makes me luckier. I don't like the <laughs> I don't like the implication of someone's body spray making me luckier. Alright. Here's the Dark Walker contact. Finally you're here. My superiors are very happy with your working against Borvo's gang and now that low life thief, Kerr Mollis. Now it's time for you to set up your set your particular skills against the Skak Tippers. What is it you want me to do? You're going to kill as many Skak Tippers as you can. Unless, of course, they kill you. If possible, you will also sabotage some of their database systems and steal some weapon research ships. Okay, I'll do it. Yes, you will. There is no point in delay, so you might as well proceed. Okay, thanks. Kind of aggressive, buddy. All right, let's go talk to the Skak Tipper contact. Yay! He's uh, over there. I guess I probably... Nah. This is fine. I can actually hit a junk dealer on the way and sell some stuff. Let's go talk to Toph before we go... Do the Skag Tipper and Dark Lighter compounds. We're gonna go Dark Lighter first. Because that's where our other mission's sending us. Here's Toph. You're here for Ekner, right? Good. Here's the deal. You're gonna go hit those lousy dark walkers where they live. Make sure they feel it. If you do a good job, all debts will be erased, and that Ekner kid won't notice in anything. Well, until next time. What exactly do you want me to do? You're going to attack some Dark Walkers and make them feel some pain. And I think you'll steal some access codes and some security cards. Unlimited access to their base might come in handy. Okay, I'll do it. Of course you will. It's not like you ever had a choice. But the problem with stealing security cards, though, is what's stopping them from just, you know, redoing the base, like changing the keys? Seems like a short, short, short side plan. Gonna have to use those fast, dude. Alright, so the Dark Walker Cave is right at the bottom of this waterfall near the feed base port slash star port, whatever you want to call it. Oh yeah, I get to the bottom of Great Falls at the location. Yay! Alright, 
So let's defeat some dark walkers to quote create a diversion. I could go in the cave and start defeating some, but the antenna I need to interact with is right outside here, so I don't want to run in yet. I want to clean these guys up. Looks like these guys can actually whip out melee weapons instead of using uh, range, so. Or they're not strictly range, which is nice for me. Because when they're strictly ranged, they have the tendency of just running off in random directions and then I have to chase them. But if they whip out a melee weapon and want to duel me, uh, I'm happy to accept. And also, I can parry that those attacks, potentially. And I got high kinetic protection, so... Since I'm whipping out, since I'm wearing that assault armor with Primus layering. Ah, twins. Twins, Basil. Twins. All right, now we can tap the antenna. We've strewn enough bodies for it to be distracting, I suppose. All right, next, the Skak Tippers. Go to their compound and prepare to tap their communications. I will, but first, I got to cause some more chaos while I'm here. So we got to go defeat free... Uh, wait, no. We got to defeat scoffs and ruffles like the potato chips i suppose i could have come in here and defeat some dark dark walkers go back outside hit the antenna on the way out but man didn't take that long to defeat the drudges <laughs> judge, judge drudge all right it's gonna keep going through murdering uh hey carl Spoilers, everybody. We found Carl, but we can't save him yet. <laughs> kind of a weird oversight with this quest. You actually learn where Carl is during it. <laughs> and you're like, why can't I just break him out now? Maybe. <laughs> so, whatever. I'm just murdering everybody anyways. Again, don't defeat named NPCs unless you need to. Because I don't know what they're... Sometimes they have hilariously long respawn timers compared to the other NPCs around them. So we're going to ignore that guy. And now we're level 33. We're getting there. One more level and I could take out a new knife. Okay. Okay, I guess that's enough for now. Instead, I need you to download some of the Dark Walker security codes from the computers. All right, we got to hit all these network terminals. I'm just going to keep going in a line. I know I passed some on the way here, but basically just do a loop, clicking all of them, and you'll eventually find them all. This cave is one of the layouts that loops, so it's not like you can go a wrong direction in this one. Bye, Carl. I'll come back for you later. I hope they're feeding you. I thought I clicked you. I think there are exactly nine terminals, so I don't think there's any ones I can skip. I think the other... <laughs> six, nine. Nice. I think the other terminals are on the other side of the cave. Because the, the right section loops. The left one, I think, goes to a dead end. Yep. So we just got to finish. We got to loop back around and then go down the other way. It might have been faster to go down the other way and then come back and loop around. I don't remember if we leave the cave after this or not. Some of these legacy missions I have pretty good memory of. Some of them, not so much. Last time I did this with Griffin was maybe like two years ago. I think, roughly. So, it's been long enough. And, you know, I like to, I like to think it's a very proud accomplishment of me to not to de dedicate more brain cells to remembering these quests than I already do. In fact, I wish I could allocate my memory to something else than remembering these quests. Specifically, the uh intricacies of them their overall plot and stuff i like remembering is this nostalgic but like where the terminals are that i need to click is not something that i really need in my brain all the time that's something that i wouldn't mind looking up when i needed that information <laughs> yeah and tto task line yeah dude i bet you can um really quote me some things all right we got to collect access cards now from sentinels which were actually down by sentinels so that that worked out well yeah i think the sentinels are only down here okay actually this was extremely efficient loop i did the good thing i love when a good plan comes together or i love when uh some sort of plan comes together i'm gonna be ignoring anything that's not a sentinel if something attacks me i'll deal with it then 
The only Toontown tasseling that um, I really remember for, from online really well is uh, Cellbot, original Cellbot, because I thought when it came out, this because I was around when the Cellbot first released. That was in the period of time where I sub subscribed. And uh, I thought it was really cool how different it was from the rest of the game. And I remember, of course, the Berg with... Um, a, a little old man that I think that's if there's any quest line that's burned into someone's brain, it's a little old man. Uh, and I remember getting the only thing I remember about Donald's Dreamland is uh, wanting to find people to do 300 buildings with, and everyone's like, No, <laughs> so you're right, though, Sex Mother. Thank you. I am schmoovin'. I have done, I haven't done the legacy quest line as much as uh some other players like Jens. Jens definitely is, I think he, Jens told me that he leveled every character profession through the legacy. I, I'm assuming they met every combat character. You technically could do this with a trader or an entertainer, but it'd be much harder. Uh, trader, you wouldn't have any combat moves, so it'd be very slow, even if you had a droid appropriate for your level at every step of the way. Ah, oh, we're done here. And then, uh, who's down here, by the way? And then, uh, trader, you also don't get XP from combat. You have to stop and craft. Uh, and then Entertainer, again, you don't get XP from combat. You get XP from dancing. So you'd have to level up, do the put points into your combat tree, do a little questing, go level up, dancing, rinse, repeat. Which, by the way, for those curious, since I did mention earlier, I leveled an Entertainer outside the stream. That's how I was able to get my goggles and change my hair a little bit here. Um, it took me about seven hours. That's with... Uh, an entertainer buff and uh, with so 15 percent expertise bonus and then for 90 minutes of that i had the perfectly inspired for the additional 25 so i had 40 percent xp bonus for about an hour and a half then the rest of it was just the flat 15 uh it took me four hours to go from level five to level 60 and then it took me three hours about to go from level 60 to level 90 and that's with me kind of babysitting it a little bit. I didn't just set it and forget it. I set it, and then every once in a while, I would look back to uh, change which dance I'm doing. Because basically, every four levels as, a, or as an entertainer, uh, you get a new dance. And sometimes a new song, but you always get a new dance. And the highest, the most recently unlocked dance will give you more XP from the previous ones. So you don't want to just do basic two all the way to 90. It would take forever. You want to change your dances every once in a while. So uh, I was just doing that with some frequency. And I was just running a flourish macro. And so I was just like, you know, I, I, I was doing my um, smuggling missions on the side last night while I was doing that. Watching Griffin Strikers Halo stream. Um, today I set it up this morning and I went and did chores and exercise. I just checked back on it like every 20-ish, 30-ish minutes. Saw that I had a new dance, swapped it. Rinse, repeat. Uh, which I was like, damn. Because I think they're in East Coast time, too. So they, like, logged on at 1 a.m. Um, Alright, access the control panel. Alright, we gotta go defeat the Mummers next, but we're gonna do what we need to do here for this Dark Walkers, which is Free Jackson Vanguards, which are all inside. But um, I was in the cantina from, like, 7 p.m. Pacific time to 11 p.m. Then I logged out, and then this morning I was there from like 10 a.m. Pacific to 2. All right, so if you run out of guys to kill, there's an elevator here full of bones. I don't know why they keep their bone corpses in their elevator, but whatever. Oh, wait, you're a researcher. My, my bad, dude. Uh... Are, are you only just researchers? Oh, I guess the ones down here aren't the ones I have to kill yet. Where are all the vanguards, homie? Are they over here? There are, is there another door over here that I missed? Some of the bases, when they have these like overlays, it's really hard to see where shit is sometimes. Like, that's actually downstairs, I think. I think there's more down here. I think that's where I'm missing. So many bruisers. I don't need any bruisers. Get out of here. Here we go. 
there's a natural life cycle for games in terms of player populations. People come around to check out during updates or holiday events, and then they might go, you know, population might dip a little bit. Uh, the Legends population has a little been a little bit quieter than usual. I've been having a hard time getting into groups for content going, whether they're pickup groups or just other stuff. Even with Griffin Striker, I think last time we tried on stream, you all saw uh, we just couldn't get anybody to do anything. We got like three or two or three players. That was it. Um, the only group content, like you all saw me roll, run Rebel Hoth last week. Uh, that was because I backfilled a pre-made that was already filled with most mostly guild members. That's the only groups I've been able to get into recently is the stuff that guilds are running. And a lot of stuff that guilds are running with any frequency right now is Kazash Sinya, and I don't really care to grind Kazash Sinya. Um, there's definitely cool things that are dropped from it, but if I want to spend time in a dungeon, I'd rather spend time um, either in Avatar hard mode, uh, because I have a better chance of getting more weapon augs and enhancements for weapon crafting, or um, more preferably heroics. Because I'm five tokens away from another biological focus crystal, which I'd like to get for this character. Specifically, five Moss Espa tokens. But yeah, even getting heroic groups going has been a little bit rough. The only groups that I've been seeing going is like usually like guilds who can't even fill their own heroic runs, and then they're asking people to backfill. And for Legends specifically, it's because back in October and early November, we had the Galactic Moon Festival event. So everyone came back around to check that out, check the new content that was added in general, and, the, you know, do spooky stuff. So everyone's kind of in a lull right now until Life Day starts, which might start the end of this week. They haven't announced when it will start, but usually starts like mid-December and then continues to the first week or second week of January. Might start this week, might start next week. I don't know. Uh, it starts when they're ready. So. We'll see. Is there another one in here? I think it's in another room, but I'll check over here. Can I run through this? No. Sometimes you can run through things. Sometimes you can't. So, yeah. Uh, that's part of the reason. Like, I really wanted to continue leveling today. Uh, but the other reason is, I was like, well, the only other things I really want to do is run stuff. And it's midday on a Sunday. I don't really think I'm going to get anything going. I saw some people forming for a Kazash Sinya in Avatar Hard Mode, but I was like, I don't know. I'm not going to roll those dice. And I haven't seen PvP popping off as much as it used to. I see some on Thursday still when the reset happens for GCW, and then I see some occasionally on the weekend. But, like, the entire time I'm streaming, I have not seen a single ping for PvP, which is... Uh, impressively little. So I think everyone's just a little cool right now on the, on just, you know, whatever their usual game is. And they're playing new games, or maybe they're busy with the holidays. Busy with work. Depending on your line of work, you get more busy around the holidays instead of less. Alright. Uh, the member base is over there. Let's go talk to... Jor Jorgen all soul and off. Is it Restus dead? Sup, diggity dog. Restus is alive for 15 minutes every hour, maybe. Typically, people go to the GCW flashpoints, um, which start at the top of every hour, and then those end at the 45th minute mark. So they'll go from, for example, from 1 a.m. to 1.45 a.m. And then for those 15 minutes, people will either spend the time A, rebuffing and vibing, going to the bathroom, doing other stuff, or B, they'll go to Restus. Sometimes during a flashpoint, if it's really one-sided, but the other side still wants to fight, they'll go to Restus and occupy the top level of Med Center to have a stronger position to try and hold off a larger group. Uh, but generally, most PvP happens in flashpoints right now. Personally, I wish more PvP happened at the best Bin Tabana platform because I think it's a cool place to fight. Uh, but to be honest, I'd rather have PvP happen in Restus and more than anywhere else just because I want more Synapse Crystals and I'd rather not have to buy comms constantly. You like Flashpoints, usually when you come back and play, use Restus to make money off comms. Yeah, like, I've bought comms. Like, I can buy a Synapse if I want, but I don't know. It's kind of mid maxi for the other professions that I have right now. Like, getting it for my smuggler was big gains, but getting it for, um, 
say, you know, my commando, eh, useful, but I don't really want to shell out, like, whatever, like, whatever, uh, 10,000 comms, comms usually go for, like, 15k, so, like, what, 150 mil, 200 mil or something? For synapse, I'd rather just like grind at least half of that, <laughs> especially since like I don't really need it. It's just mid maxi. Um, if I was playing a spy, though, I might go out of my way for it since you can proc it off Assassin's Mark. I got it, I really want it for my smuggler since you can proc it off um, double hitting from Lucky Break. And if you have hammer fanning or one hit, uh, one two pummel, all right, back with Toph. It's Skak Tipper. He's like, nope, you're good. All right, um, let's see how much time do I have my buffs. Let's go to let's do the Mummer base, and then it's gonna take us to the Borbo base, and then we'll uh, loop back with everybody here. You don't have anybody who sure only grind the crystals for your main character. Yeah, like my smuggler is my main character. That's the one I prefer to PvP on. So good. Now find the medallions. The Mummers keep with them. Three got to do it. Wait, this was progressing my officer quest, but you told me to defeat Mummers down here. Well, I'm glad I didn't go out of my way if these guys can't. This guy's in a rock, RIP. This is one of the situations where if you had a heavy weapon, you could maybe get him out of the rock. Not that you'd have a heavy weapon by level 33. You can't wield a heavy weapon before level 54, so... <laughs> Great, now come back for your reward. Okay, well, I guess we could turn the officer one before we end for today. <laughs> Gotta go back to Gadar for that. We'll do that later. All right, go defeat the Borbo. Last on the list are Borbo's thugs. Go to their bunker and prepare to tap their communication antenna. Okay, dokie. Sergeant Major. Some of you have also noticed that at this point in the Legacy Quest, we're seeing fewer players. I saw one earlier driving through the water, likely doing the Legacy Quest. Uh, but once you leave Tatooine, encountering other players does uh, diminish. As just like any game, most people start uh, start the game, but maybe they won't get super far, or maybe, you know... They get partway through Legacy and like, all right, I get how this game works. I'm just going to go AFK the rest of my levels, which is totally reasonable. But if we see any players while doing like the Corellia Legacy, I'll be a little surprised. If we see any players while doing Tal's Legacy, I will be shocked. By the way, if you ever see me in game on this character while questing or um, on any of my other characters, don't be afraid to wave, say hi. Sometimes I might be in the middle of something, though, like maybe uh, buffing for PvP or actually doing PvP. So if I don't hold a conversation too long, sorry. Don't take it personally. I need one more. Come here. Boom, baby. All right, now we can go back to Sergeant Bragg. Uh, yeah, let's turn that in. The six or so in Tansari was also a surprise. Dude, I think there is, I think I counted by the end, there was 14 players inside that Tensari point station instance during that stream. And I was in space for like, what, two and a half hours of that stream. So that was only for like four hours. And I was in, in between Station Gambit and Tansari. I was shocked by the number of players inside Tansari. Like I, I like maybe thought we'd see one or two, not like 14. I thought the greatest concentration players we would see is like White Thranta Base, Jabba's Palace, etc., which we did see quite a few there today. The um, Tansari one, though, I was like, damn, what the hell? There's this many people in Tansari? Like I said, maybe this is a pop in post Thanksgiving Sunday. Everyone's like, you know what? I got all these turkey leftovers. Let's level a character in Galaxies. <laughs> Nothing like a little mashed hater in uh, Legacy Quests to really get me hankering for more leftovers. Okay, he's just Sergeant Bragg, not Sergeant Major. My bad. We leveled up to 34. You know what that means? We get charged. Now we're cooking with gas. We're going to be moving so fast. Good work, Trooper. We've identified the terrorists almost immediately. It was the Mummers. They never suspected that their communications were tapped. Or maybe they just didn't care. Either way, good work. What's next? Mummers, other than some of the lower grade members, are known to often use toxins in combat. Go speak with Lieutenant Karina Donnells and make sure we have enough neural boosters to protect against the Mummers' toxins. Lieutenant Donnells is an RSF scientist. I'll go speak with Lieutenant Donnells. Good, get going. Cool. Random entertainer. 
We also got heal too, baby. We're going to heal for more. We also got tactics five. Hell yeah. We also got focus fire two. And we got inspiration mark two. Haven't used inspiration much since I got it. Also, uh, you didn't play when Bestman launched. Would you say there's a reason that uh, no one really hangs out there? Or is it just the habit of going to Izzy for everything? Um, Izzy will always be the center of everything because that's where new players start. So it's just, you know, where everyone pops out. The main reason people don't hang out in Bestman, though, is because the only content really people consistently return to is the Holonet Arena, which is um, an instance thing that you go down to the underground canteen and then go in. Entertainers will return to a quest, but that quest they AFK or can go do in the Isley Cantina um, or other cantinas. PvP platform, like I said, doesn't pop off. Uh, you'll sometimes see crafters in the uh, guild hall grinding Tabana, mixed Tabana gas. But other than that, Bespin is really cool. I like it. They want it to be a new hangout, but honestly, unless they change where new players get spit out at, which they won't because of how the quest system is currently structured for new players. It's just always going to be Isley. All right, we're back at Hugo. He says, no, no, we've done everything they've asked, and yep, my son has not yet been released. I have no other choice. There's only one option left. What is that option? I need you to rescue my son, Carl. I know this might put his life at risk, not to mention your own well-being, but I see no other way. Not to worry, I'll help res uh, rescue him. Thank the Force with a capital F. The first problem is that I don't know if the Skak Tippers have Carl or if the Dark Walkers do. We already know the Dark Walkers do. Whichever it is, he'll most likely be at their base near Thede. You'll have to search them until you find Carl. I already did. Uh, which would you like to start with? Uh, Dark Walkers. All it does is give you a waypoint to the cave. You don't do anything. So getting the Skak Tipper ones, I don't think is helpful at all. Let's go talk to Lieutenant Dunnell. She is a little bit further back in the palace. Um, she is this way, if I remember correctly. You can see a little bit more of the palace decor update here. Very nice. I also like how they updated the lighting in here a little bit. It was always kind of dark in here. Um, uh, not in there. I think she's up this one. Yes. Lieutenant Corinna Dunnels. Ah, good. I was told you were on your way, Trooper. I'm afraid her stock of neural boosters are a bit low. I need you to help me restock before we move on the Mars. What do I need to do? I'll need you to gather a few ingredients for some samples of the mummer's toxin to start with. Go find the uh, Zorna plants and gather some of their roots. When you have enough roots, take them to the refining station, process them where I for take the Zora plants. Zora plants are most often found among long rivers and streams that flow from the bottom of the waterfall. Walk along the river. I'm going to drive until you find some. You probably need to check more than one of the rivers that flow from below the waterfalls. I'm on my way. Luckily, these plants are pretty uh, abundant. I don't think you have to get every single one. There'll be some extras, so we have some opportunity to, you know, skip some or just, you know, if we miss one, it's not the end of the world. All right, let's go turn in our officer quest. Hello, Sergeant. He says, finished, eh? I knew you'd do it. You haven't even you that spark. I can always know. That's it. That's it. Your officer mission was just go murder more, guys. Exhilarating. All right. Well, today we, what do we do? We started and finished up a theme park. We finished the Tatooine Legacy. We gave some tips on how to make uh, macros and how you can use them in the game. We started the Naboo Legacy. We completed the Kadara, Corin, and now we're deep in the Feed section. Uh, we went from level 25 to level 34, so not quite 10 levels. Since we are a little bit over leveled, we're not getting too much XP from the NPCs, but you know, almost 10 levels is not bad for a four-hour session. Uh, the leveling is going to feel a little bit slower since we're getting further and further away from our normal level span. Uh, but, you know, not bad. Thanks for all joining me today, and I'll see you all next time on the level one and I journey.